Good morning, everybody. How are you? Uh, another day in paradise. Um, you know, not much going on. It's kind of a quiet day today. Uh, you know, I made my coffee and I, How are you? you know, yeah, brushed my teeth this morning and um, washed my face and tried to comb my hair. Nothing going on. So I'll see you guys. Have a good weekend. See you Monday. Okay, goodbye. Uh, wait a minute. Um, no, there's something else going on here. Um, it's April 1st. Welcome to April Fool's Day. Uh, welcome to that. Okay, I'll see you Monday. Okay, bye. Uh, no, no, there's something else. There, I forgot something. There's something I want to talk to you guys about. There's something going on. Something happened last night. What was it? Oh, yes, GameStop. Something happened with GameStop. Um, isn't it interesting how... Uh, Things are evolving here so quickly all of a sudden. Amazing. Um, welcome to the show. Welcome to the party, pal. If you haven't been around watching GameStop lately, you've been kind of missing out. Two weeks ago, the stock was $78 a share. Uh, two weeks ago and three weeks ago and four weeks ago, New York analysts were, one, walking away from trying to predict GameStop's future. Two, whoever was covering GameStop came out with, uh, sell recommendations, uh, $29 stock per target prices, $39 target prices, um, you know, doom and gloom. Uh, the stock, uh, the company came out with their earnings for the fourth quarter, uh, and they talked about a little bit about what they were up to, but not a lot because, you know, how GameStop is. They don't really talk. They just do. They just do what they do, and they don't talk about it they don't speculate about it but the one thing they did release to us in the financials the one little nugget that i chewed on was how uh, the gross sales went from five billion to about six billion and um even though they still had a loss for the year no surprise they put so much money into the business to expand it out and, and diversify it out but the sales went up 20 percent and um, nobody in Wall Street is talking about it. And why is it that no one on Wall Street will talk about GameStop? Any guesses, anybody? I, I know the answer. Uh, pick me, pick me. It's simple. Um, if you're Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, you're any of these investment outfits, what have you, um, why would you talk about a company that doesn't make you any banking fees or commissions? What's your upside? Uh, what you're gonna you're gonna talk about a stock because your clients trade it a little bit? No, no. You're gonna talk about a company that makes you money, that generates revenue for you. Uh, if you kind of notice uh, when company X raises a bunch of dough on Wall Street. The bankers that they use, the brokerage firms they use to raise that money, talk about the stock all the time, and they come up with, they come up with analytical reports up to your neck. Unbelievable coverage. Uh, they'll have their people, they'll have their uh, um, uh, banks spokespeople on CNBC talking about the stock they just raised a bunch of money for and tell you how great it is. They will be the stocks promoters, the shills for the company. Like you can't believe because they have a vested interest in promoting the stock. They just finished putting their best clients into the paper. The least they could do is promote the paper now that they got their best clients in it because they want to show their clients that they did the right thing by buying this issue. And um, the, the broker is now going to back up the stock with a bunch of promotion. And it's not the case at GameStop. GameStop doesn't have a broker of a Goldman Sachs size or jp morgan or any of these other monster outfits there is no one outfit out there that gives a crap about gamestop gamestop does it all by themselves gamestop does virtually nothing by themselves which is incredible because the stock is one of the most talked about stocks in the stock market good or bad um and the company does almost no promotion they they they, they have however beautifully put together a little group of um what do i call them uh followers fans i, I guess and then there's me of course I'm, i talk about games all the time but 
But there are entities out there that publish stories about GameStop from time to time. And I think that they are fed the information through friends at GameStop to then come out. And this is where we heard about the NFT thing. We heard about the crypto thing. We've heard all about the, uh, uh, you know, the, the ongoing what's going on with the company thing, but not from, you know, show and tells. It's not like the company goes to any kind of shareholder symposiums. Do you, you notice that there's a lot of stocks out there that do press releases? They'll say something like, um, uh, we're going to present our company's future and, and prospects at the so-and-so investor symposium in New York or in Washington or virtual reality, whatever. You notice that GameStop doesn't do that ever, ever. They never send anyone from the company to talk to anybody on a public record basis. It is completely, we don't talk. Yet, the stock is one of the most talked about stocks on the on all of the stock exchanges. It is one of the most talked about stocks in all of the, uh, the meme stocks out there. It is called the king of meme stocks. And the number of, of, of clicks that this, this company gets is just unbelievable. There you go. So there, there you go. Um, way to go. Uh, congratulations. Because I, I got to say, from my perspective as an old, old man, um, I'm 66, just in case you were wondering how young this face is. Um, when I was in the stock market business in 1978, 79, 1980, and so on and beyond, in those days, you had companies uh, that would hire promoters. Now, whether they were hired officially or unofficially was another matter. Um, there would be guys, and usually it was all men, but there were the occasional female, but mainly guys, who would, uh, they would be a friend of the president of the company, and they would cut a deal for a bunch of paper. They would literally buy, they would, they would be offered an opportunity to buy a bunch of stock from some of the insiders of the company, directors, relatives of directors. It would be sort of a, an arm's length deal that the regulators couldn't figure out. And this is the old days when stock certificates were pieces of paper not digital, pieces of paper. And you had guys who had attache cases full of stock certificates. I'm not kidding. I'm not making this crap up. This is real life. And these guys would have paper in their hands that they didn't buy. They didn't own it. The stock was actually held by others. But they would get the stock registered into street form so that they could be re-registered in anyone's name. And they would have options to buy this stuff for 20 cents a share for, say, a million shares from a group of insiders of a publicly traded company. These are all penny stocks. And they would turn around and flog this stuff at 35 and 40 cents and 45 cents and 50 cents to investors. While at the same time, these promoters would open up trading accounts all over town and all over where we were in Calgary, Alberta, Vancouver, Toronto. And in the USA, they would open up accounts everywhere and they would start buying and selling the stock on the open market to manipulate the price of the stock. I'm talking old school stock promotion. This is common practice done with thousands of stocks, thousands over decades, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. Regulators were so, uh, they didn't exist. Those that existed didn't care, uh, they didn't have the muscle to, to investigate this stuff. And we're talking penny stock. So thousands of these companies are being promoted simultaneously. It's like whack-a-mole. You, you couldn't stop it until you had a blow up. Anyway, those are the old days. You had the old promotions done and you had literally spokesmen for the company that were not hired by the company, not officially employed by the company. But if you wanted to know as a broker, if I wanted to know what was happening with XYZ Mining Company or ABC Oil and Gas Company, little tiny juniors, I knew I could call some of these promoters. I could call these guys and I could have a, have a drink with them or have a coffee with them somewhere. Not in my office. God, no. No, no, no. I'd meet them at a little place and find out what's the word on the street? What's going on? Because... I'm in Calgary. It's the home of the oil and gas patch. Vancouver's the home of mining. Um, the brokers in Vancouver knew the mining stocks. The brokers in Calgary knew the oil and gas stocks. 
And we were on top of the game because our customers were all buying this stuff. They were all looking for the lottery ticket to get rich on. What can I buy for 20 cents that's going to two bucks? That's all they wanted. And we had to be on top of this stuff. That's how it used to be. Uh, now you have investor relations departments. Inside public companies, you now have hired employees of the company who are now in the investor relations division. And these people, if you have a top-notch investor relations leader, that person has the ear of the CEO and the chairman of the board. And those two collaborate with each other. They talk all the time and the board of directors, everything else. And the, the investor relations professional who also talks to the company solicitor uh, for uh, guidance to, to say whatever we're going to say as a company is cleared by the lawyer first, securities lawyers, um, they're tight. They're all tight. That should be a very tight group of people. And when you uh, see a show on CNBC uh, and you watch uh, host so-and-so talk to somebody about company whatever, it could be a company insider, could be the CEO, it could be uh, the chairman of the board, it could be the, the lawyer for the company, um, or it's, it's um, an analyst that is with a, a brokerage firm that uh, is talking about company XYZ, and the analyst has been fed the info to talk about by the investor relations department. And that way, the, the, the message that the company wants to get out there is brought out there by a legitimate source that the company has a relationship with and all is well. And now all the shareholders, all the shareholders of the company that own uh, the stock through the account of that brokerage firm, they see a brokerage firm spokesman talk about the company that they own stock in. And everybody's happy because they're promoting the stock. They're promoting the story. CNBC has a professional on the air and they show that disclosure thing that this guy has. And generally, you get about three seconds to read those disclosures and you don't have enough time to read it. But at the end of the day, the guy is a paid spokesman for his firm and the firm has a banking relationship with the public company and it's a conflict of interest and it's all disclosed and therefore it's all legit. It's all good. GameStop doesn't do that. <laughs> to kind of tell you the whole story, GameStop doesn't have a, a investor relations department that uh, is very aggressive. They have one. Uh, but they almost don't do any press releases. They they almost they almost don't speak. Um, this news we hear about the stock split for GameStop is through an SEC filing. There there is no there was no uh, CNBC interview last night after the close with a CN with a GameStop representative. There was no CNBC uh, uh, interview with all kinds of analysts from Wall Street. Uh, if they have any now, whatever, there's only only two or three of them cover the stock and they all hate it. They hate the stock. So incredibly, the company all by itself has got worldwide media attention and they cover their story. The only problem with this thing is that they're blowing it. GameStop constantly keeps shooting themselves in the foot. They have worldwide media exposure available to them at, at a beck and call. If Ryan Cohen, <clears throat> Ryan Cohen was to just call a news conference, I won't take any questions, but I will read a statement. Every media organization would cover it. It, it would be totally covered. And every word he uses would be his own words and what he wants to say to the world. And it would be covered. I mean, chairman of IBM would kill for this. Uh, the chairman, uh, uh, Steve, Steve Cook. Um, uh, you know, over at Apple, he gets worldwide coverage because it's Apple, right? But the other S&P 500 companies, there are probably 425 S&P 500 companies that would kill for the kind of exposure that GameStop can have in a nanosecond and doesn't take advantage of. They look to guys like me, which is, you got to be kidding me. They look to guys that aren't like me, who are uh, writers and bloggers and vloggers and what have you, to... Uh, talk the story out. And so we, we give our opinion because that's what I do here. I give you my opinion in plain English as to what I think is going on here. And you've got to believe it or not believe it. It's up to you. Does Bruce know he's talking about or is he just full of hot air? It's okay. I accept that. But with GameStop, we're all doing this. I'm doing it. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what they're up to. Others are doing it, what we're trying to figure out to. And we're just talking heads trying to figure out what the hell's going on. And in my case, I'm trying to give it to you in plain English. 
And here it is in plain English. Companies like Google and Amazon that announce stock splits will announce to you a stock split of 20 to 1. They tell you right now, we're going to split our stock 20 to 1. No mystery here. For every share you got now, you're going to have 20 later. If you have a call option right now that's good through the end of this year, you're going to have 20 call options by the end of this year because we're going to reduce the price of the stock by 20. And we're going to increase the number of shares by 20. That's all relative. But our $3,000 stock is going to trade at $150. And if you've got five shares today, you've got 100 shares tomorrow at $150 each, worth three grand. Okay. No mystery, all right? The whole point of Amazon doing this and Google doing this, these are hugely profitable companies, oodles of cash in the bank, stock buyback companies. They buy back their stock. They want to do this, the split <coughs> to increase liquidity so shares will trade more actively at 150. Options will trade much more actively because they're all at you know 150 strike price, 100 strike price, $200 strike price, you name it. But they're also now companies that can be theoretically included into the Dow 30 industrial average. And it could well be that Mr. Bezos and his associates and over on, over at Google, all the top people there, they would really like to have that feather, one more feather in their cap, Dow 30 component company. Very prestigious. And of course, for all the pension funds that only stocks and all the hedge funds and all the mutual funds, they now have a Dow 30 component stock in their portfolio. And there'll be a whole bunch of uh, mutual funds that will now need to buy AM, uh, uh, Amazon and need to buy Google shares because they are mirroring the performance of the Dow Jones. And right now these two companies aren't in the Dow Jones. And so you get that. Okay. That's those guys that over there. This is GameStop. GameStop is announcing uh, the intention of a stock split. They would like to, they like to talk about doing a stock split, but they can't. Uh, they, they're not interested in splitting the stock at the moment, where there are seventy-six million shares outstanding. If I got my numbers right, there's seventy-six million out there about. They could theoretically do a three-for-one or a four-for-one stock split right now, without any vote by any shareholder they could just announce it we're going to do a, a three for one four for one there will be just under 300 million shares outstanding when we do the four for one stock split for every share you have you got four for every option you have you have four options all going through uh june 30th we, they could pick whatever date they want within reason 30 60 90 day notice boom put it out there done deal because they have the authorization right now to issue up to 300 million shares. The company can issue 300 million shares right now. That's all pre-done, it's all authorized, it's on the books. But no, they're not gonna do that. They're saying to you, the shareholders, and your fans, all the world out there who's watching, we're going to go to the shareholders and ask for permission from the shareholders to go from 300 million shares outstanding up to 1 billion shares outstanding. Now, this has caused a lot of speculation out there where people are going, oh, they're going to go from 300 to 1 billion? That's a 3.3 time expansion of how many shares are going up. They're going to do a three for one stock split. Makes sense. Makes perfect sense. Yeah, they could do that. They could do that. They could do a two for one. They could do a three for one, but they could do more. And I think they will do more. I think they're going to do five to one. This is my personal opinion. I think five to one, but I think that is step one of a several step process because you don't split stock in a company that loses money, generally speaking. <laughs> Normally, when you do a stock split for a company that loses money, you do a reverse stock split <laughs> because companies that lose money trade at a dime a share on the over-the-counter market, what we call the pink sheets, and they don't qualify for listing on any stock exchange because they are so low priced that no exchange wants these guys. So what they'll have is a billion shares outstanding now, and they'll do a 10-for-1 uh, rollback, and they'll go from a billion shares to 100 million shares, and they'll go from a dime a share to a dollar a share, and once it's all done, the stock will only trade at 45, 50 cents a share anyway. And now they'll try to get listed on some kind of exchange and then issue stock from the treasury to raise money and survive. That's typically what losing 
companies do. Companies that lose money, that is the playbook since the dawn of time. But this company loses all kinds of money, theoretically, but has all kinds of money. This company has a big fat cash balance sitting in their bank account, 1.3, 1.4 billion as of their last report. They do lose money, but at the rate that they're losing money, they could go another five years and still not run out of cash. And that's assuming they keep losing money. And a lot of folks out there are going, they're not going to keep losing money. They're shifting their business over to e-commerce, NFT, crypto, blah, 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 blah. They're changing completely. They're not, they're not a blockbuster anymore. We used to call these guys the blockbuster video of gamers. They're not that anymore. All right. Then why are you doing the stock split? What's the deal here? Well, the stocks uh, was 160 yesterday. It was as high as 199 three days ago. It was $78 a month ago. Um, the stock is close to $200 a share. So, you know, you can do a split. Great. Uh, you're giving the shareholders a little, it's a, it, it's a theoretical reward. But what you're really doing is you're increasing liquidity in the market. You're putting five times as many shares out there. So you'll have much more daily volume on the stock. You're going to have way more daily volume on the options contracts, which are active as all get up. GameStop contracts are incredibly popular. But you've got other things you can do. If you do a five for one split, you're going to issue 380 million shares in total now, still leaving you 620 million more shares you could issue out, okay? I'm wondering if step two is between now, next week, two weeks from now, they announce that they went to their pals at Jeffries & Co. Jeffrey & Company in New York, brokerage firm. They may have already been talking to Jeffries and Co. to say, you know what? We got plans. We have hopes, dreams, and aspirations. We got 1.3 billion in cash. We'd like a little more cash on hand. We'd like to have a war chest in our possession because we've got uh, ideas. We have targets. We might have acquisitions here. Why don't we raise some money? After all, our shares are now up to 190 a share here, um, you know, close to 200. And with a little announcement of a stock split, maybe the shares will go to $200 a share. Why don't we issue 10 or 20 or 30 million shares from the treasury now and get up to 100 million outstanding, pop this 30 million shares out there to all kinds of institutional investors. Pick up the phone, you guys, and find out if any mutual funds any pension funds, hedge funds, ETFs would be interested in buying a piece of a block of stock up to 30 million shares, around $190 a pop, and we'll pick up $5.7 billion in cash on top of the $1.3 we got. Now we have a $7 billion war chest, $100 million out. Split it five for one. We have 500 million shares outstanding. <clears throat> 500 million more we can issue. And we have 7 billion cash in the bank. Why do we do that? Because now we completely transform the company yet again. We're, we're not just the brick and mortar and then now into NFT and crypto. Now we're a cash rich company with some stores and the crypto and the NFT and the all kinds of other stuff. We are buyers. We're on the hunt for assets. And what we'll do is we'll do step one, we'll announce the buyback, or the rollover, split the split. Second thing we'll do, issue stock for cash. Even before the split's completed, we can do this. Step three, we're buyers. We're looking to buy stuff. We're going to take public, uh, private companies over and bring them into a public company. <clears throat> and it could be, it could be that for every um, dollar of cash that they use to buy a company, they could issue five dollars in stock with it so one dollar cash and say five dollars in stock is six dollars of an asset so if you're going to acquire a 60 million dollar company it's 10 million in cash and 50 million in stock you know acquire a 120 million dollar company 20 and 100 the ratio continues and so you take seven billion spend five of it on acquisitions multiply five times Six, enough. You get, you see what I'm saying? $30 billion in acquisitions. You, you, you haven't issued all the stock. 
you've taken the company to a whole other level. This could be the plan. Why would you split the stock of a company that loses money? Makes no sense. Why would this? Why would the stock be 190 in the first place? Makes no sense, of course. But here's how you take advantage of something like this: you raise cash, you use the stock as a as cat currency to get more assets with the cash backup you have. Because you could go to a company that's worth 100, 150 million dollars, private company, and say, "We're going to buy you. We're, we want to buy you up." And the company's going, what's that? What's in it for us? Why should we bother uh, joining you? And they'll, they'll uh, argue, well, we're publicly traded. So all of your employees and all of your shareholders of your private company now are part of a public company. And we're sitting on a war chest of X amount of billions of dollars. And we're going to take your $150 company and help you turn it into a $1 billion company. Because we're going to invest in this company. We have the cash to do it. That's why you want to become part of this public company. We're not coming to you cash poor. We're coming to you cash rich. We have no debt. We just raised a whole lot of cash because we got a whole bunch of people who want to buy our stock and believe in our vision. Why don't you be part of that? I can see private company after private company after private company wanting in on this deal. I can absolutely see it because look at it the other way. You're a private company out there. You're worth $100 million as a private concern, $150 million as a private concern. If you were to be a public company, maybe you're worth half a billion. Uh, maybe you're worth $800 million. Maybe you're even worth a billion dollar enterprise value. You've heard that term before, enterprise value. What are your options to go public right now? You could go public through a SPAC. Would you like to be a private company right now and think about going public with a SPAC with the latest rules that have just come down? the proposed rules from the SEC on all SPACs out there? I don't think so. I don't think you want anything to do with it. You're going to look at that and go, to go public through a SPAC with all these SEC rules in place right now, it's going to cost us $100 million in legals. Forget about it. We're not going public like that. We can't go public through an IPO. No broker wants to take us public on an IPO because why? The markets have been down, interest rates are going up, and the IPO market is dead. So we can't go public any other way. But here comes this GameStop company with a whole bunch of dough they're raising here. They're splitting their stock. We can go public with a stock split. And you know what? We get in with these guys at like $35 a share or $40 a share. That's $175 to $200 a share. We get in, in, involved with them here. A year from now, the stock could be $60 a share, which is $300 to all existing shareholders, by the way. Would that be a lovely little deal? I can see a lot of companies being very interested in going public through the back door, through an existing public company, rather than going through that minefield of the SEC and all the SPAC rules. Do not be surprised with five or 600 SPACs out there who are shopping for private companies. You are hardly hearing deals being done anymore by SPACs. SPAC, uh, there was one, maybe yesterday there was one, I heard one. There are very few SPACs announcing triumphantly, we're, we're merging with company blah, 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 because the SEC has kiboshed all of this potential. And do not be surprised if in the next few months and next year and the year after, hundreds of SPACs are going to give back all the money to all their $10 investors, and they're going to just pack it up because they can't attract a private company that will pass the smell test under all the new SEC rules. Rightly or wrongly, that's the way it's going to be. Companies like GameStop, who can raise cash, do this split, create shareholder excitement, these guys are in a power position. They can pick off all kinds of entities and really transform themselves. This will be a most interesting thing to watch. Anyway, that's my take on it. Step, it's a three-step process or more. There's no reason to split the stock simply because you're a nice guy, Mr. Cohen. He's a nice guy, and he just wants to give everyone more shares than they have now and increase liquidity and make it easier to trade. That is not the primary reason you do a stock split for a company that loses money. If they were making money, I can see inclusion in certain indices and... You need a certain number of shares out and a certain amount of uh, turnover. I get it. But no, 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 not a losing company. No, 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 no. no. So th these guys aren't going into the Dow 30, okay? They're not going into the S&P 500 right now. No, 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 no. This is, there are 
several stages going on right here behind the scenes to want to create a reason, to want to have the reason why you would split this stock in any way, shape, or form. Could the stock split be more than five to one? The answer is yes, it could be. Does it make sense for the company to consider a 10 for one split, where for every share you have now, you have 10 shares? The stock would, instead of trading at 192, what we see right now in the pre-market, instead of trading at 192 down the road, it would trade at $19.20. Well, I can see a reason to do it from one angle, just one angle only. You're a major shareholder of the company. You're an insider. You're Mr. Ryan Cohen. You've got um, institutional investors that you're aware of that own some stock. And then, of course, you have your millions of shareholders. However, however, there are many there are. I don't know if there's millions of shareholders, but there might be hundreds of thousands of people that own this stock. Um, if it starts trading at 19 bucks a share, theoretically, because if it's a 10 for one split, um, I can see it going to 40 very quickly. Just on spec. Well, that's 400 a share. So, you know, you want to have a, a nice little doubling of your uh, returns, uh, make yourself worth a whole lot more money, split a 10 for one, it's easier to push it to 40. If you split it five for one, you're taking a $190 stock and you're turning it into, what, uh, $38. Uh, to get a $38 stock to 76 is a little more difficult than from 19 to 38, if you follow where I'm coming from. But still, um, a $38 stock to $58 a share, 60 bucks a share, that's $300 a share, current values, that, that's promotable. But again, how are you going to do it? If you don't talk in front of a camera, <laughs> you don't have a spokesman that speaks to any, any media representative, you are never quoted, the company is never quoted in any financial report or, or, or article, <laughs> Wall Street Journal, uh, New York Times, uh, Washington Post, uh, uh, any any financial entity out there I'll be on that. They don't talk. Uh, so we're left to speculate. And welcome to my show. I'm sitting here with, in plain English trying to tell you, this could happen. This could happen. That could happen. Get ready now for the next wave of news on GameStop. And it's not coming from the company. Get ready for an, an absolute scenario where you're going to be inundated with all kinds of conspiracy theories, all kinds of mother of all short sale conspiracy theories. Um, you're going to be, you're going to be just deluged with, with uh, uh, thoughts where, oh yeah, this is the ultimate short squeeze move of all time. This is going to catch the short trade, short sellers with their pants down. Oh, watch this market go crazy. And it, there's no limit to where the stock can go because they're going to do a stock split. Problem is, we don't know what it is. We don't know how many shares are going to be split. We don't know when. Uh, we got nothing. We've got nothing. And uh, this is typical GameStop behavior. And it, it is uh, infuriating, infuriating. Um, but on the other hand, uh, they're following SEC guidelines. And they, there's only so much they are allowed to say. And so there you go. Now now that this news is out, by the, by the way, just to give you another heads up, this is from... This old man's perspective, I suspect that because they've now announced through the SEC filings their intention to seek shareholder approval to split the stock and so on, you're not going to get a surprise announcement tonight or tomorrow or next Tuesday or two weeks from now that Ryan Cohen bought 100,000 shares on the open market. That's not going to happen now. His window has been shut down to buy more stock. He would be in such trouble with the SEC if he were now to start buying stock on the open market personally. He did his 100,000 share purchase a week and a half ago, whatever it was, um, and that was that. So there will be no help from insiders of the company personally to buy up all this stock now and run it. That, that's not going to happen. The stock is on its own. And who are the shareholders? You guys. You guys are the shareholders. Most of the shareholders of GameStop are retail investors, I think. And uh, most of the, certainly most of the shareholders of the free trading stock are retail investors. And so it's in your hands. But I will note that at the moment, it has been trading between 188, 186 to 195 the last couple of hours. It is not going to $250 a share. To me, 
I'm thinking to myself, if this is the mother of all short squeeze strategies being done here with a stock split, an unknown stock split, um, you would think that there would be three, four million shares traded by now in the pre-market. We were we traded last night for four hours after the close. I think over two million shares last night, um, and they got to two hundred four, whatever it was, but they closed around the one ninety something. And here this morning, uh, we're now what are we now? Uh, Twenty five minutes away from the opening. We traded five hundred and eighty eight thousand shares. Where the heck are the buyers? This is what I ask all the time. Where are the buyers? I know where the sellers are. The sellers are those who own the stock. But where's the buying coming from that's going to run this market? The mother of all short squeeze promoters out there, all these you know guys and gals that keep talking about, we're going to get the mother of all short squeezes. They don't ever tell us where the buying is coming from. They, they speculate, well, it could be this, it could be that, it could be from option players. People will get exercised and they'll create a shortage. Da, 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 da. Where is it? Uh, if, if, if I'm a... Uh, uh, a uh, well-funded um, hedge fund uh, based in Zurich, New York, London, Paris, Dubai, wherever the heck I am, and I have access to billions of dollars of capital from very wealthy individuals, um, and I call a meeting, uh, you know, I'm the manager of this thing, and I call a meeting with my top advisors, sit around the table and we say, okay, well, what's on top here? What's going on? What, you know, what do we hear? And the war room, uh, it's discussed that uh, oh, GameStop just announced they're going to do a split. It looks like a split. And my question is, should we buy any of this stuff? And no one comes back and says, yeah, we should, but we're not going to buy any of this stuff. Someone has to come to me and say, Bruce, we as a hedge fund should be buying up this stock like crazy right now. We should just buy it at 190 195 200 We should try to get as many shares as we can because we will have way more shares later when the split is done. And if we buy a whole bunch of this stuff, a whole bunch of shorters will be caught with their pants down. This would be great. And they'll be forced to buy at higher prices and it'll run, you know, it could run to three, 400 share even before the split. Wouldn't that be great? Well, that should be happening right now. This should have been happening last night, one minute after the release of the, uh, the news. Didn't happen. It isn't happening now. These hedge funds are pretty, these guys are slick. They, they're really smart people, incredibly well connected uh, in Wall Street and everywhere else. They understand the minutia of every little thing with respect to the SEC and, and, and uh, the psychology of investors, the whole enchilada of how the market works. These folks would be right now all over this. On the other side, if I was short a lot of stock, and I wanted to cover my butt on this thing, what would I be doing right now? Well, I'd be, I'd be buying up my stock. I'd be buying stock to cover my short position. But there's another way to do it. And if I'm short a bunch of stock, a way for me to cover my rear end is buy contracts on the open market, buy option contracts instead. Another way to do it is I go to the derivative market in London and I find an investment banker that wants to sell me off the market derivatives against this stuff for me to cover my rear end. And that could be going on, which is what we don't see. We don't get to watch that. We don't get to regulate that. No one regulates that. It's untraceable or unregulable or regulatable. Is there such a word in there? Um, there are probably um, 10 bets going on for every bet we can track on this stock off the market. And so we don't see the shenanigans going on behind the scenes. But I will say this, I don't care how many billions of dollars are changing hands between speculators on derivative markets on, on whatever the heck they're trading on. But in the case of GameStop, there are people out there, entities, organizations, institutions that are short this stock and they are exposed, they are naked to a real problem here with this money, this thing running up, um, uh, there would be some trickle effect coming into the market. They might be able to cover most of their exposure with derivative and insurance type contracts and everything else. But at the end of the day, somebody somewhere would be buying up this stock knowing that, oh yeah, there are hundreds of millions of shares shorted on GameStop. There are hundreds of millions of shares shorted on AMC and 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 all the other meme stocks. There, There's zillions of shares shorted 
I'm going to say, really? Why isn't this thing trading more than half a million? Was it 604,000? Why is it at 604,000? Volume at 188.61 right now. What's wrong with this picture? Yeah. There's an old expression that I learned from a guy uh, many, many years ago. I don't know if he's still alive or not. Uh, if you're out there, um, the, the uh, one-liner was, the market never lies. That's the truth of everything. The market never lies. And right now, the market is 188.75 on GameStop. And we're sitting on the potential of a powder keg of a split announcement, which is a dividend-type deal. There could be tax implications that could really run this thing. They say 188.05 right now. Not 288, not 388, 188. This stock was trading higher two days ago on its own. It was in the 190s two days ago on its own without any split news. It's less than that. The market doesn't lie because the market is what investors believe it's worth right now. And that's the, tr it's the truth with your house. It, you can list your home for whatever price you think your house is worth. But your house is worth what the buyer bids for it. And if a buyer bids what you're asking for, your house is worth what you thought it was. If a buyer outbids another buyer to offer you 20000 more than you listed your house for, you underestimated the value of your house. The market doesn't lie. It's worth 20 more than you think. Now, maybe that buyer's an idiot. On the other hand, if there are 100 buyers all bidding up, then maybe they're smarter than you are. I don't know. But the market doesn't lie. And right now at 189.92, we're jumping around here. This isn't the $400 stock. Where is the mother of all short squeezes? Remember, this stock hit 500 something a share last year, uh, what, a year and a bit ago, January, February? It's at 189.92 with the stock split. The split, the news we've been waiting for for a year. What I was begging the company to do, I was begging these guys to do a stock split last year february i was begging them to issue stock from the treasury i was telling them please please sell stock just just sell a million shares out of your treasury at 350 dollars. that's 350 million dollars in cash you only had 400 million in debt total you guys could do a million shares and almost wipe out your debt if you did 10 million shares at 350 dollars a share you're trading 50 million a day sell 10 million from your treasury you'd raise 3.5 billion dollars in one shot and the market will forgive you for it and you'll pay off your debtor and have 3.1 billion net left over who's going to say you're going under now they didn't do it they didn't do anything they didn't do the split they didn't raise that cat by the time they raised money the stock was 154 by the time they finally did who was running the show at that time behind the scenes ryan cohen Finally stepped in there, and I guess he, he gave his approval. If he was asked, I don't know, he, he was probably nodding that I think it would be a good idea if we raise his money. And then Sherman went ahead and did it. But uh, this company, this stock right now, 189.88, uh, they're in a position, in my opinion, these guys are in a position right now to issue 30 million shares at 190 a share right now for $5.7 billion. They should take it. Because that will give them $7 billion in cash to play with. And announce a stock split of 5 to 1 when the time comes. And now you've got a well, uh, a very good liquidity market, good liquid market with a company with $7 billion in its bank account. That changes everything. So well, that's just me. What do I know? I, I'm, only, uh, I'm only around from the 80s, so I'm just doing the best I can. Anyway, there it is. There's uh, where we're at this morning. We're opening in uh, 16 minutes. What do you think is going to happen? Unbelievable developments the last little while. I've got a, a poll question out. If you'd like to participate here, uh, thank you, by the way, for thumbs up. So we have 170 already. Thank you. But here's the poll question. GameStop shares will be over or under $200 by the end of the trading day today. I'm talking about the trading day on the New York Stock Exchange. I'm not talking about the pre-market. I'm not talking about the aftermarket. I'm talking about the New York open market hours. And 74% of you are saying this stock will be over $200 a share by the end of trading today on the New York Stock Exchange. You optimists, 
26% of you are going, no way, Bruce, there's no way this stock is going to be over 200 bucks a share. It's going to be under $200 a share. 452 votes have come in, and I thank you so much for, uh, for being here. I really do appreciate it. I also want to say thank you to, uh, number one, all of you who are here today. Thank you. Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And then those of you who are here, um, for those of you who are doing these comments right over here, these folks right here, they are members of this channel. Those of you who don't know, I was on a year ago. I was on live last year, January, when everything was exploding, trying to explain in plain English what the heck was going on. Um, but by March of last year, we were being attacked by trolls relentlessly. It was so bad that we couldn't read the comments anymore because of all the crap that was going across. YouTube was not stopping it. The only way we could deal with it was to privatize or turn the channel into a member channel so that the commentary here is either folks who are members of this channel or who send us a super chat and want to make a comment. It has greatly reduced the abuse and has kept the channel in a PG format, which is number one in my book. This channel is open to all, and we welcome uh, uh, anyone and everyone to come on in here and pop by and say hi. We feel like we're a little family here. And uh, we are particularly pleased with how many women follow us on this channel. This channel has one of the highest numbers of females following our stories, our stocks, than most channels out there. Because most of the financial channels that are out there on YouTube, frankly, are a guy's hangout. And uh, I get it. It's okay. I've got a problem with it. But I wanted to make sure that this channel was available for anyone and everyone to come and join in and feel comfortable here. So... Try to keep it PG rated as much as we can. And the members of this channel are the best. We have two levels of membership, $9.99 a month. You're a chilling with Uncle Bruce member. Comment all you want. For $24.99 a month, you're one of these guys up here. You're a Gold Bagel member. And you not only comment here, you are also part of the daily trading alert show, which I do before this show just for Gold Bagel members. And you're joining us every Wednesday night, 8 o'clock prime time for just Gold Bagel members. It's a hangout with yours truly. Ask me whatever you want about your accounts. We don't have to worry about the market trading at the same time that I'm answering your questions. And so it's a much more casual format. It's very effective. We do talk a lot here about stocks and contract stock options. And we talk here about writing a lot about writing call options. And I have put together a website, stockmarketswithbruce.ca, uh, because I am from Canada. Um, and if you go to that location there, you'll find that um, oh, up here somewhere, there'll be a bunch of tabs. One of them says classes. And I have made classes, live classes, for people who are interested in learning how to write stock options and bring in extra income from stock you already own. There are millions of investors out there around the world, but particularly in North America, tens of millions who have no idea that they can bring cash in from their portfolios with what they're sitting on. And, and it, 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 it horrifies me how many people I have talked to with one-on-one -on -one meetings that I also offer who tell me that they've been sitting on stock for 15 years and have done nothing with it. They own mutual funds, they own ETFs, and they just, they just, leave it there and they could be generating income from these investments through option very conservative stock option strategies and uh, i gotta tell you um uh, i i think we are changing lives in in a number of cases here where people are realizing oh my god i i don't have to work i thought i had to work another 15 years i'm 45 i figured i have to go to 60 or i'm 50 i figured i had to go to 65 or i'm 60 i thought i gotta go to 75 I can quit now. I can live off just the option premiums on what I already own. And if I make a few adjustments to some of these stupid investments that were made through my employer and what have you, I make a few adjustments to what I've got in that portfolio. I can write way more different types of contracts and bring in far more revenue. And my wife and I can both retire immediately. And I can be, in effect, a full-time asset manager, my own assets, uh, following Uncle Bruce and his gang over here that talk about writing options all the time. Check it out. Uh, look into it. There are 12 lessons over there right now. More are coming. Each one is two hours long. And if you 
acquire one of those lessons, it's a hundred bucks, hundred dollars. Um, you don't have to buy all 12. Buy one, watch it, watch it as many times as you want. Uh, 24 hours of instruction approximately waiting for you over there whenever you want it and um, learn how it's done and take it step by step. No right, no race. Take your time. It's not, this is not a sprint. This is a marathon. Learn how this market works. And that's what we try to do here. I try to help you with understanding how the market actually functions. Mark, Cherry, thank you for becoming a gold bagel member. I uh, appreciate that. And I'm glad you're here. Uh, this channel, again, you have to know a few things. If you haven't been here before, I don't trade. I don't own any stock. I don't, I don't have fancy charts over here. You don't see all kinds of tickers going by. Other channels will do that for you. I just talk to you about what's going on in the market. I try to answer questions from these folks during the trading hour. Um, uh, I don't have a conflict of interest where I'm trading against you or, or trying to encourage you to trade with me. Uh, I, I'm just here to explain what I see going on and, and, and what it means. And those of you out there who, uh, who uh, want to trade stock only or want to trade contracts or write contracts, it's your call, however you want to do it. Uh, that's my shtick. I'm I'm an, a former stockbroker from way back when. With I had clients for years and years and years. Um, I've done this business uh, most of my adult life. I've been a, a branch manager of a brokerage firm. I've been a partner in a brokerage firm. I was a president of a public traded company way back when. Uh, so I have experience from the broker side. The management of a brokerage firm side as a manager and the VP and the public company side as a president of a publicly traded company. I was also based in the Cayman Isles for a couple of years. So I have offshore asset experience and I understand that world. And I've done corporate finance work over the years. And now I'm a YouTuber and I'm 66 and I'm kind of retired, but I'm not because I'm doing this instead. And it's a lot of fun and I enjoy having viewers from all over the world follow me and follow this market. And uh, if I'm able to help you make money, I'm a happy guy. How do I make money? How do I live? Right there, right there it is, right there. These guys, this is it right there. Members of this channel are uh, the, the folks that are carrying myself and my Aunt Jennifer Aniston lookalike wife, Jennifer, uh, Auntie Jen. Um, without the membership, we would not we would not be, we would not be on the air. Um, a year ago, this channel had unbelievable views, unbelievable, because GameStop was exploding along with all kinds of other stocks. All the meme stocks were nuts. And we had thousands of people watching our show all the time. The problem was that most of those folks were desperate for me to tell them what stock to buy on the opening that would make them a millionaire by the end of the week. And uh, I kept attempting to mention again and again and again, I don't give you stock tips that will make you a millionaire in a week. I wish I could. But then again, if I knew those kinds of answers, why would I be a YouTuber? <laughs> why would I be sitting here talking to you? I'd be a multimillionaire, maybe a billionaire, and you wouldn't even know who the heck I am. But uh, those of you who have become members of this channel uh, have kept this channel on the air because if things have slowed down and calmed down, now it's hard work to stay alive as a YouTuber in this commentary business because you have to have a, a following that, uh, that, that you make sense to. And so you've joined a pretty good family over here. We welcome you. If you become a Gold Bagel member, you have my undying uh, respect and, and adoration and thanks. Um, it keeps us on the air. And uh, there are those who will occasionally send a donation our way through a super chat or a PayPal donation for uh, uh, for uh, for thank yous and we appreciate it very much because the advertising that YouTube pays me uh, doesn't cover the bills <laughs> we don't have enough use for that so thank you all for being here this morning we're opening in six minutes and we're going to follow this GameStop story and everything else that's going on try to make sense of what the heck is happening out there because it's just never a dull moment. We have inflation concerns, interest rate concerns, supply chain problems. We've got a war in Ukraine, they tell me. Uh, we got GameStop situations. We have uh, companies doing stock buybacks. We have companies who are or are not going to increase dividends. We have uh, the potential of a recession or the or, or not. Uh, we have uh, 
China problems, uh, financial problems in China. We have just an endless amount of things to cover simultaneously, which we have to do. Because if you are serious about making money in this market, you better understand how this market actually works. And you better buy into the notion that you can't think that just because you want to play one stock that you know everything you need to know. You have to understand what could affect any one stock you follow or index or sector for the whole from the whole world's angle. Because uh, there are sometimes events that happen in one country way over there that affects your stock right over here. And you had no idea that, 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 that there could be this connection. Let me tell you, there is. And um, I welcome you all to uh, the uh, age of discovery. Um, I'll do this as long as I can. As long as I keep enjoying it, I'll uh, bring it to you and try to give you the, the, the straight goods in plain English to help you figure out what the heck is happening out there. This world is nuts. But it's kind of entertaining, got to say. Uh, we're up 132 points right now in the pre-market for the Dow Jones Industrials. 0.39 of a percentage point. Not a lot going on there. Uh, S&P up 15 points. NASDAQ up 40. Remember last night, if you were with me yesterday, the Dow was down 550 points at the bell. The Dow lost 550 points yesterday and most of it in the last hour and a half, two hours. That's where the whole market just fell out of bed. Do not trust this 134 point uptick as a, oh, we're getting it all back. This could be a dead cat bounce. We just get a little recovery and we might peter out and we might go lower. It all depends on a whole lot of factors going on out there, uh, including the perception of uh, bond players and, and bank followers. What will the Federal Reserve do with the next round of interest rate hikes? The talk was up until a few weeks ago, even the chairman of the Fed was saying, think we'll raise rates one quarter of one percent every month for you know the next six seven months or so you know, by the end of the year we'll have like a one and a half percent interest rate fed reserve to banks you know maybe one of three quarters all of a sudden in the last few days it's all churned and went no 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 and we're talking half a point increase coming up in the next week or 10 days and another half a point increase the month after that we're going up a half a point a month not a quarter point a month this is upsetting the apple cart this is worrying analysts globally because high u.s interest rates higher u.s interest rates are a pain in the rear end for americans yeah sure it doesn't it's not nice to know that your mortgage is four and a half instead of three and three quarters you don't want to hear that but there's another problem with higher U.S. interest rates, higher global interest rates, because the rest of the world follows the Americans. American economy is the number one economy in the world, the most powerful, the most liquid, the most trusted. And everyone else out there will reflect off of the U.S. rate rises. They'll all go up. That means the global economy cost of money has will start to rise dramatically. And that means... The companies at the bottom of the list for prosperity <clears throat> will pay the biggest price. The U.S. and the G10, the G8, the G20, all the industrialized companies in the world, those of us in Canada and the U.K. and Germany, we can handle 2 percentages, 3%, 4%. We can handle 5 We're crafty. We're smart. We studied. We're okay. But you want to talk about countries that are uh, in, in 120th place, 140th place, 85th place, they don't have the industrial and, and economic power to easily circumvent and get around higher interest rates. These outfits, these firms pay dearly. Now, <clears throat> there will be uh, some casualties, uh, namely some dictators might have a tough time. Well, too damn bad as far as I'm concerned. A dictator doesn't, reserve, doesn't deserve any respect from any of us. But certain countries that are run with iron fists who have all of a sudden got higher interest rates to deal with, they're going to have problems. Uh, but uh, these uh, fledgling democracies, uh, they're caught up in the vortex as well. And uh, we're going to have to watch for that because if economic slowdowns happen in countries with high populations of third world nationals, you're going to have discontent in those countries. And you don't want that. 
we in the G20 and the G8 do not need to have 20 countries around the world, 50 countries around the world, where people are starving and getting desperate and don't give a crap about the rule of law and now decide to kidnap Westerners as currency to get enough money to keep feeding their family. We don't need that. That's not good for business as a whole and the, and the human race. And so higher interest rates can lead to problems, as stupid as it sounds. And we're only talking a couple points, just a couple points. It's the psychology of higher rates. This is the, this is the thing we got to remember. People fear higher interest rates. Once they are high, they deal with it. But the thinking that they're going to be higher really puts people off. How many people have decided not to buy a house right now? I'm not going to buy a house because interest rates are going interest rates are going up. Wait a minute. What, what are you talking about? You can get a mortgage four and a half percent. What if a year from now they're eight percent? You could lock in a four and a half right now and get a house now. People will shut down right now and go, I'm not buying a house. Uh, I'm not no nope. rates are going up, I'm not buying a house. That changes economic trajectories dramatically in all kinds of businesses. So just the thought, the mere thought of, of a higher interest rate policy can moderate an economy very quickly. Now, maybe the Federal Reserve folks are going, this is what we want. We want these uh, over-exuberant investors and speculators to calm the hell down so we can calm inflation down a little bit. We don't want this demand to exceed supply all the time. We want to kind of get a soft landing and just will threaten half percent interest rate increases, but not do it. We might do one, but then we'll do a quarter of a point. And then the next one, they'll all worry, oh, is it a half a point or a quarter point? And if it's working that inflation is calming down and what happened, maybe we'll only do a quarter of a point. That's the game that is being played at the Federal Reserve. It's a lot of it's psycho psychological. We're watching it. Anyway. Tons to watch. Um, as I said, S&P's up 15, Nasdaq's up 35. Uh, crude oil down $1.17 to $99.11 under the magical $100 level for West Texas Intermediate Crude. We are open, by the way, for trading. Let's get on with it and see what's going on here. Where are the stocks trading at? What are we dealing with? Uh, oh my gosh, are we going to be busy today? It's Friday, option expiry day. I got GameStop at 185.86 right now, up $19 a share on the open market right now. The first uh, trading salvo that's gone through, the first block of stock in the first two minutes, 1.45 million shares. That's what's going on. Welcome one, welcome all to the show. That lot, not Larry Titus rang the bells for us. As always, thank you, my friend. While Larry is at jury duty, We've got not Larry Titus stepping in. Happy trading, everybody. Liz is um, giving me thumbs ups. Thank you very much. I think that's what that means. I appreciate it. Or is that where the stock's trading at? I think that's where the stock's trading at. Maybe I have more than 188 thumbs ups. I haven't even thought of that. I got 251. Oh, Liz, uh, thank you for letting me know what GameStop's doing. And if you've already given me a thumbs ups, I thank you. Uh, switching in between. Crash it, crash it, says Freethinker. <laughs> <laughs> We're at uh, 184.76 right now on GameStop. Uh, the high of the morning so far uh, has been 189.76, the low of 183.44. Uh, so we're trading in a $6 range. This will change. We will have a wide trading range today probably. Uh, those of you who, as I said earlier, if you're sitting on calls that are expiring today or next Friday or the Friday after and you've got strike prices, far below 186 and that wouldn't surprise me you're looking to do rollovers shop the option chain to see what they look like and if you're able to uh, buy back your call and write another call uh, instead uh, a few weeks going forward or a month or two and you can get a higher strike price at the same time Take a look at doing that trade, all right? Um, worth your while. We're at 184 on GameStop. We are backing off. The lower it goes, the cheaper these calls are to buy back and to roll. Target your next contract. Figure out which contract you're going to write next. Figure out how far up the chain you can move. You may throw some dollars into a contract where you're buying back a contract for $60 and you're writing a contract for $40. Uh, you have to come up with a $2,000 differential, but by doing that, you move up $30 or $40 in strike price or $50 in strike price. You spend two grand to earn $5,000 more in strike. Might be well worth your while. It's something to look into. 
keep your eye on it. 180 94 right now, but don't think this is over, that these shares are just going to plummet off the face of the earth. There's a lot of volatility here. I expect this all morning long. We now have 1.9 million trading on GameStop, 180.59 last trade. Uh, 179.13 was the low print so far. Okay, that's what we're showing right now. We've got the Dow at the moment. Uh, down 80 points. Uh, we have um, uh, S&P down 10, NASDAQ down 49. That's where we're at right now. And a whole lot of stuff going on. AMC right now down 28 cents to 24.36. There should be no benefit whatsoever to AMC with all these developments on GameStop. AMC is a totally separate company. There is no connection between the board of directors. There's no connection between the senior management of each company. They don't, they're not in the same business, but yet there is this fallacy out there. There's this conviction out there. There's this belief that if GameStop goes up, AMC goes up. And if AMC goes down, GameStop goes down. They're, they're just joined at the hip. Well, I think AMC, AM, GameStop is about to do several steps uh, with a split, perhaps raising some cash and doing acquisitions. None of that is happening at AMC. There's no stock split. There's no raising of capital. And I don't see a bunch of deals where AMC is going to be dramatically changing their valuation. Yes, it's true that AMC a couple of weeks ago got involved with Highcroft Mining out of Nevada. Yes, it was a $25 million deal with another $25 million option. It was a $50 million deal that they could get involved with. Highcroft could go up in value to 10 bucks a share. It'll mean pennies a share to the AMC bottom line. Because AMC has 520 million shares outstanding now, and they're trading at 24 bucks a share. Where Highcroft, if Highcroft added 500 million dollars of value to AMC, which it hasn't yet, but if it were to do that, AMC would be worth a dollar more per share. And when the deal was struck, AMC was 17 bucks a share. It's now 24, so it's already moved more than the deal could possibly give them from where I sit. It's just my thought. GameStop, 185.61 as we're moving about here, up $19 a share. Volume on GameStop now is 2.25 million shares. That's where we're at. Never a dull moment in this business, let me tell you. Uh, every day is another day of discovery. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Appreciate uh, that you're with me today, and uh, hopefully you're uh, enjoying it uh let's see what's going on here uh why would people uh want to write strikes that are lower than the cost basis well again um it's a question of uh, of what situation you're in if you've written 110 calls and you buy them back and you can write now 130 calls you're 20 dollars closer to the market huh. you might say oh yeah but it's 184 bruce it's not even near close well it's 20 dollars closer it's two thousand dollars a contract, more value, more valuable to you. And you may find that in the next week or two, as that contract you've now written, the new one, as it depreciates with time loss, you may find that uh, in a week or two you can move again. You can go from a one thirty to a one fifty contract, and a few weeks down the road you can move from a one fifty to a one seventy contract. You're just slowly but surely rolling up your contracts to catch up to the market price. Because eventually you'll catch up to it or it'll come down to you. I mean, stocks fluctuate. And uh, there are times where you'll uh, write a call and you'll be out of the money and you'll always be out of the money. Other times you'll you write a call that's out of the money. Quickly, you're in the money. Uh, and then you're way in the money. So you start to catch up to the stock. And over a few weeks or months, you completely catch up to the stock and you're surpassing it. And then the stock falls dramatically. And now you're way out of the money. It can go either way. So... Uh, that's how it worked. Um, let's see what else is going. Uh, what's happening here? Uh, thank you all for popping in here. It's nice to see you. Uh, come on, SoFi. Let's go. SoFi, 9.57, up 12 cents. Rocket Lab, uh, down 8 cents to 7.97. The Dow is up 91 points right now. We got uh, AMC at 24.82, up 18 cents. We got Highcroft uh, up a nickel. Matterport up 8 cents to 8.20. 23andMe up 9 cents to 392. Spire unchanged, 210. ATIP up 4 cents to 192. Smart Brand is up 9 cents to 515. Sixtera down 14 cents, 1208. Pfizer down 47 cents at 5130. Uh, this stock has really been gyrating quite a bit lately, but it's running into some selling now. 
51.32 on Pfizer as it is backing up. Robinhood up 12 cents. We've got Vanek uh, Vectors, the ETF, SMH, up 22 cents. Home Depot up $1.46. IBM down 32 cents. Microsoft up 11 cents. Apple down 93 cents. I think Apple's going to give up a little more ground here going forward. Goldman up 270 to 332. Just cannot get going. Uh, Cisco up 28 to 5604. Facebook up 277. Amazon up only a dollar, well, now only up a nickel. Tesla down 98 cents. Google up 260. We do not have a serious up move being shown here by some of our big cap stocks. They are not showing us some really strong up moves to start the morning. Um, I'm not trying to tease you or anything like that. Uh, I'm not going to take my clothes off, but I am going to take this uh, sweatshirt off. Get a little warm in here. Hang on, folks. There we go. Got to keep the hair clean, though. You know, kind of don't let that get mussed up. Welcome, one. Welcome all to the show. It's April the first today, April Fool's Day. Uh, but it's uh, we're not fooling around with GameStop here. Uh, we are at one eighty three sixteen. We're ahead here, um, uh, sixteen dollars a share or so. Volume on GameStop now is uh, two point six million. Um, definitely more than normal. Yes. Is this really heavy trading? This is not really heavy trading at all, but it, it is more active to be expected. Um, but boy, I'll tell you, um, last night we were at 204. We hung around 195 for hours last night. This morning, this morning, uh, 190, 190, whatever, uh, now 182 a share. We're running into some selling. Uh, people are profit taking, and I can, I get it. Um, if shareholders feel that this move, as I feel, is a multi-phased move. This isn't just a single split-only thing. There's more behind it, including raising cash, perhaps acquisitions. We're dealing with a situation where they're going to issue more stock from Treasury. That's dilution. That is dilution. And that is a nasty word people don't want to hear. And GameStop will be here for the long haul. They're not here for a one-week wonder run. They're here forever. And the folks who run GameStop have got to figure out how to best work this company down the road. And that might mean the issuance of additional shares for either cash and or assets. Oh, by the way, cheers all of you around the world. Thank you for being here today. It looks like Guinness, doesn't it, Look without the foam on it? Caffeine-free Diet Coke, uh, the drink of champions, what can I say? Anyway, we're going to see how this goes. Um, uh let's go um yeah tiff says uncle Bruce. i've heard several times that the gamestop split will force shorters to cover since the the shorter stock won't split do you know if this is true it sounds fishy to me uh look if you're short a million shares of so of of gamestop right now you're short a million shares and i don't know what price you sold it at. it doesn't matter you sold it at 150 sold it at 190 you're short a million shares after the split you're short 5 million shares. If it's a 5 to 1 split, if it's a 3 to 1 split, you're short 3 million shares. But remember, upon the split, uh, the shares aren't trading at 182 a share or 200 a share. They're trading at one fifth whatever price the shares were the day before. So if they're going to be 180 a share uh, when the split happens this summer, uh, the day before, the day after, on a five for one, this is a thirty-six dollar stock. So yeah, okay, you're short. You're short now five million shares, but they're at thirty-six bucks a piece, and so the volume will be five times as much as before because there are five times as many shares. There's no difference there. It's really no different. The difference to the shorters is: will buyers come into the stock because it's low price now, thirty-six bucks a share? and bid it up to 70 bucks a share on hype and speculation. That would be would be a problem for the shorter. If they are short at 180 and it then goes uh, to you know 36 and goes to 72, they're they're down a bunch of dough. Yeah. But then again, they might buy back as it goes up and then as it tops up, they'll short all over again and what ride it back down. They might pick up call options in the meantime to negate the short position so they make money on the calls as the stock goes up on them so whatever they're losing on the short position they're making on call options hedge funds have got a lot of tools to protect themselves and so 
this market, it, like I said, the market doesn't lie. It's 179.26 right now. It is not lying to us. It is telling us stocks 179.26. We're up 12 bucks. I am not afraid of this stock taking off on me at this point in time. Are, are you? It doesn't look to you like it's going anywhere. Um, we have got a long way to go before this split even happens. 2.93 million traded this morning. Not 12 million, not 15 million, 2.9 million. And 180 a share at this point is where we're at right now. Can it go to 200? Yeah, in five minutes. Absolutely. But can it go to 150 in five minutes? It can go to 150. Yes, it, it has volatility written all over it. So be mindful of all of it. Gain, AMC down 38. Um, Highcraft uh, Mining, Highcroft Mining is down um, tw uh, two cents a share. So they're not they're not getting any help from from GameStop today, not at all. One seventy nine ninety five on GameStop. SoFi is green nine forty seven, up two pennies. The Dow up only sixty. Rocket Lab now down eleven. Um, the S and P is down is up nine point nine. Nasdaq is up forty four. Uh, gold down uh, ninety nine ninety three a barrel. There you are. That is what's going on right now. Uh, let's see what else is happening. Welcome all to the show. Uh, we're having all kinds of fun here. Never, never a dull moment. Um, and uh, yeah, the, have not mentioned the 2022 equity plan because we don't know what it is. Uh, we're waiting to find out what that's all about. Um, and then we've got Tiff going, well, I sold my GameStop for 150 because I wanted to get to 100 shares by swing trading, buying looks like that was a waste. Still hoping for it to drop so I could buy it back. Well, it's slowly coming there to you. Rob, morning, Uncle Bruce. A bit late to the party. I sold the contract last night at 165 for today for 8 bucks. Obviously, I'm rolling over today. Would you just wait until the afternoon at this rate? Yeah, I would. I would just uh, sit back here and keep an eye on this stock. Uh, you, I know that you're going to watch the, um, the option chain. And when you see the right trade fall into place for you, you're going to make your move. Now, if these shares want to back off to, uh, you know, 173, <laughs> you will break even because your calls will be worth about eight bucks and that's what you got for them and you're fine. Now, you can move into 165s for next week or the week after and get a higher premium for those shares versus the, for those contracts versus the ones you did here. You could always do that as a minimal, but you can also look at uh, rolling into 170s or 180s for a several weeks forward and to play that game too. But at the moment, here we are, 180 a share. Um, picked off knows, I heard the split requires a share recall, which would screw the shorters. Again, these are the conspiracy theories we're beginning, we're gonna hear about. We're gonna hear many more like this, that, oh, the shorters are just gonna be caught with their pants down. No, there's no way they can deliver the paper. There's no way they can do it. I wouldn't uh, read too much into that. Uh, Uncle Bruce, Crazy town question. I uh, sold GameStop cover call 97 bucks for April the 22nd. I could roll to an April 1st, um, a $20 and exit with 6750 in my pocket. Is this a valid exit strategy of a, of a bad cover call, right? I'm $8,700 uh, on the cover call now. Um, <laughs> I'm just trying to figure this out. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure how to. I'm not sure how to how to how to play this. I, I I this is a crazy town question. I don't have a crazy town answer for you. Uh, this is a weird one. Um, I'm going to need some time to really figure this out. I don't have time right now. Up to my ears in uh, in live uh, live activity here. Um, yeah, I don't know. A ninety seven dollar call is obviously uh, right now uh, in the money. Ninety four dollars or so, and with a one eighty one stock price. Um, so to buy it back is going to run you closer to 96 to hundred dollars. I suppose you have until the 22nd of April to do what it is you need to do. If the shares back off to 150 between now and next week, sometime you're only 53 in the money versus right now, uh, um, 80, um, and a forward, uh, uh, rollover might be the better way to consider doing it. This uh, twenty dollar thing, I don't, I don't know what it is you're, you tell me. I, I am, 
I'm confused on that one. So I, I, I just can't go any further with that comment. Uh, come on back down, baby. You cost me good night's sleep last night, says Hockey Rink. Dave, the Mac guy, uh, there will be huge downward pressure on GameStop pre-split uh, to keep the price down to buy shares at the point. We'll see what's going on here. Um, Michael, looks like I was right about Apple going too high too fast. Alberto, Uncle, thanks for your the unexpected live yesterday. You kept me sane and I was able to sleep right on, buddy. A DM, uh, a stock split in the form of a stock dividend. Uh, yeah, that's what they're calling it. Thanks, DM, for the donation. Michael, early market is all over the place. Um, yes, it was. Um, and uh, uh, Rob, okay, thanks, Bruce. Uh, going into a quick meeting. See you after. Hope it doesn't jump while I'm in the meeting. 178.69, actually falling at the moment. Uh, RC believes it. Um, who cares if you're giving up 7700 in cash when you get a sign? Cindy, is it possible to get executed this early for the for the GameStop? Uh, theoretically, you could be exercised at any time. You could be assigned any time. But generally speaking, option players are not interested in exercising their contracts. They really, they just are playing the contracts. They're, that's all they want. Uh, DQ, uh, Cindy. Someone's saying yes. Uh, vapor up, Bruce. I'm short a few uh, GameStop 150 expiring July 15. What's a role to look into, or should I just hang tight? I, I just hang tight. Uh, I just hang tight. Um, I mean, yeah, you could look at a role, but you're, you're going to be paying a huge premium right now to buy back your stock contract and roll into something else. Um, right now, um, I wouldn't do a thing. I would let this contract just uh, uh, shrink out with that time value. Let that shrink away. And then deal with it from there. So yeah, no, no need to react quickly at this moment for any reason whatsoever. Calm is the word. One seventy six fifty seven on the stock right now. Volume three point five million. We are not running away with the uh, with the heavy duty panic buying. Uh, we're not going to see fifty million volume today. We with that we used to see back last year. We're not going to see twenty million. Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to see 15 million shares today. I, I really don't know. 177.20, 177.04, 176.99 um, now. The low of the day, 176.34, from what I can tell you, um, we're backing off. We're up 10 bucks, but we're not up $40. And this is really interesting how this is playing itself out right now. Um, without details and without someone in front of a camera uh, without an official spokesman on CNBC, without a broker acting on behalf of the stock, like an investment advisor, we're sitting here going, what's going to happen? What do you, you think is going to happen? Well, I don't know. What do you think is going to happen? I don't know. Why didn't you just tell me the name of the movie you want to see? We have no idea what's going on. Uh, we're up 63 points on the Dow. Uh, we're up two on S&P and we're negative 10 on NASDAQ. I mentioned earlier in the show, do not trust this market for a big time rally. This could be a dead cat bounce. And in the first 23 minutes, it's exactly what we're getting. We've got stocks that popped a little bit, but they don't have any oomph to them. And I was just going through the uh, stocks the other minute or two ago. They're not running. And uh, we're now running into some stock coming in. Uh, we may be going lower. I don't know. Uh, SoFi heading into discount mode. 931 on SoFi, 784 on Rocket Lab. Unbelievable um, how cheap they are, but not surprising to see them backing up. The market is backing off. AMC down 94 cents to 23.70. Um, Highcroft down 13 now to 217. Matterport up 11 cents. ME up four and a half. They're holding. Spire uh, down four and a half. ATIP up two cents. Smart rent down 11 cents. Sixtero down 18. Pfizer down 28 cents. And we're negative on Vanek. Uh, we're negative on IBM. Microsoft, Apple, they're all down. Amazon is down. Tesla's down. Alphabet's down. They're all negative. That's what we're at. Um, and we're at 176, 78 on GameStop. Um, Alan Krager. Uh, new member. Alan, how you doing, man? Uh, welcome to uh, the Chillin' with Uncle Bruce Club. Man, Alan, thank you for popping in here and joining us. It's great to have you. Welcome to the family, and uh, and uh, people will likely welcome you in here. Uh, if you're a returning member, welcome back. If you're brand new, welcome to the to the group. Uh, Nine to Nine Nations is saying hi to you. Goyote, Tiff, they're all saying hi to you already. 
Um, I'm just trying to get out of a, a, a who cares says to DQ. I'm just trying to get out of a covered call that has me locked up until April. Um, if I roll the covered call at expiry today with a twenty dollar strike, I take sixty seven or fifty back now. Maybe I'm thinking about it wrong. Um, something's not adding up here somewhere, and I'm uh, my brain is too fried to figure it out. I must be getting old. Good morning, Alan from Zed Estates. Uh, John is saying welcome, DQ. Welcome back. Rock and roll. Liz is laughing out loud. Alan, good morning, everybody. Nice to have you, pal. It's nice to see you. Uh, we're up 60 points on the Dow, uh, down 10 on NASDAQ now. We're only up two on S&P. Rocket Lab is down 16. SoFi down six. GameStop, 178.66. The low of the day, 176.10. 3.7 million volume traded. Market is not lying. It is quiet uh, comparatively. And considering the news on the stock, we are really quiet on the trading front. But we can fluctuate. No question about it today. We can really move around. Those of you who written calls first thing this morning, you might be buying them back right now for profits. Uh, those of you who wrote calls the other day, the 200s, uh, to 190s that didn't cover, you might be looking to cover now. You might not. On the other hand, these shares, could they go to 150 today? Yep. Could they be down 20 bucks a share today? Yep, they could be. Will they be? That's the question. That's why we're here. Uh, we'll see what uh, what it does. Um, what can I say? Um, what else is going on? Um, looks like a lot of profit taking happening right now, says uh, Credit Savage. There is a lot of trading happening here. Uh, we're down 66 on AMC to 23.98. And... Um, We've got uh, oil holding a 25 cent gain now at $150.53. So it's a little recovery up from that $99 level, apparently. Uh, but we're negative seven on NASDAQ. And we're going to see if this is going to hold or is it going to level off for a while and then get worse? Are we going to go through some sell waves on these markets with some recovery waves? What's going to happen? Lots to uh, follow here. 99 nations oh my god i don't have i don't have coffee no wonder uh i'm gonna fix that right now there you go buddy way to go 179.74 on gamestop right now the volume 3.87 million the company announced they're going to go from 300 million shares to a billion shares if the shareholders will approve that and then they will plot plot a stock split that is the word we don't know what kind of a stock split is being planned? We have no idea. What will the ratio be? Everyone's speculating um, all kinds of numbers. We don't know. Um, Splayer, Uncle Bruce, do you think my Matterport order at 809 for today is placed all right? Um, uh, Matterport, we're at 833 or at 809. Some of my feeling it won't go there uh, back there maybe like 10 minutes ago. Um, you might be better off putting in an 811 buy order rather than an 809 buy order because 809 you're behind all the buyers at 810 and that's a round number at 811 you're first in line you've got that one penny higher than everybody else or maybe 806 or 801 just in case there's a slippage because at eight bucks there'll be a ton of buyers it's a nice round number 810 there'll be a bunch of buyers 820 825 all these nice round numbers there'll be a bunch of buyers you want to be just one penny ahead of them if you can Smart Rent is begging me to buy more, but I really should buy groceries. Damn you, Smart Rent. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Smart Rent right now, $4.97 a share. The the uh, low of all time for Smart Rent, $4.94, and that was today. Uh, we have touched the low of all time on Smart Rent. $10 SPAC company that is growing leaps and bounds adding customers they cannot keep up with the customer counts their sales grew are adding clients faster than they can install systems this is the problem these guys have these these, these guys are suffering from too much success stock is not reflecting any of it it's unbelievable but these are crazy days uh these markets are uh, a little different now all right. Um, thought so as well. 112, maybe. Thanks. You got it, buddy. Sorry, you're going to be all right. GameStop, 178.86, up $12 uh, or so. Uh, the low of 176.10 has been was hit just a few minutes ago. The high this morning, 189.77. 
uh, overnight, we were 195 to 204 on this uh, potential stock split news. But the reality of the day is, uh, at the moment, keeping it down a bit. This could be temporary. We might have a run, a recovery run. Um, it could go higher. Yeah, it could. But um, it might also go lower. Uh, this is Friday, expiry option day, too. A lot of things going on here. Uh, Rosie, Uncle Bruce, thinking of buying a $60 call on GameStop to write poor man cover calls against it. Uh, January 2023, the bid ask is 116 to 128. Uh, it's in the money, uh, 120. Is that going to give me approval? What do you think, Bruce? Is that a good way to go? Well, um, uh, the stock itself is 180, and you're trying to buy a, a $60 call, so it's 120 in the money. Um, and if you can buy the call for... Uh, you know, if you could get it for 118, 119, you're stealing it. I mean, you're stealing it um, because it's 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 uh, free. I mean, you're buying it for just book value. You've got till 2023. Start writing covered calls on it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, theoretically, you could pay 128, but I wouldn't. Uh, the best bidder is 116.30. So put in a bid at 116.50. We'll see if it comes to you. You never know. Um, the stock has any kind of a dip to 175, you might get hit just like that at 116.50, and you've stolen that thing at book value. Well done. So, yeah, Rosie, give it a shot. Um, Alberta, another 50 shares added. Want to have the uh, Google power uh, shooting for 15 of Google? Please, Phil. Phil, come on, you despicable market. <laughs> Freethinker, uh, 300 million to 1 billion authorized shares. GameStop could have issued the maximum. Um, uh, like Adam did, uh, he's the friggin' man. Um, Splare, Spire was the other low company in Sixtero, the data company. Uh, that's true. So Sixtero is the data company. Uh, credit, Rosie, at that point, you might as well buy the stock. Smoke, uh, smoke dog slept in past the opening bell. Laugh out loud, morning, everybody. Well, again, you know, if you buy a $60 call, um, you're paying here a hundred and, you know, 108, 116, $117 a contract. That's $11,700, whereas to buy the stock is $18,200. So uh, if you don't have $18,200 to write one contract, you can write a contract for 11 something thousand just getting a 60 If you buy an 80 maybe you can get it. I don't know what it'll cost you, but if you can buy an 80 for $100, odd dollars, 101 to 102 then you're paying ten grand instead of 18 for the stock. Rosie, thank you, Uncle B. You got it, Rosie. You're on the right track here. Austin, Michael, should I look? Uh, what, what do I, what's going on? Uh, 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 Fran, France, Francis Logan, L Logan. Uh, thank you, Francis, for joining this uh, group of ours. Um, we have uh, Francis coming in as a chillin' with Uncle Bruce member. Thank you to, uh, to you for joining our family. I'm glad you're here and make uh use the emojis and uh, give us commentary uh, nice to see you thank you everybody welcome back says free thinker welcome back there you go got folks popping in here love it love that it's happening all of you uh thank you so much for your support um we've got the dow up 51 uh sp up three nasdaq up five so it's pretty quiet uh oil negative again down eight cents a barrel to 100 dollars and 20 cents or so and we're negative 61 cents on AMC and Highcroft down 11. We got GameStop now 180.17. It's jumping between 176 and 182.83. Right now at 180. The high of the day 189.77 at this point. Right now 180 and uh, $180 and one penny. And I'm also showing it at 179.97, depending on which machine I'm looking at. Song of the day says Duncan. Uh, Zed, uh, Uncle Bruce sold one contract. GameStop, two hundred dollars strike expires April twenty two for sixteen thirty five. What do you think about that? Oh, I like the premium, <laughs> like that fat premium on an out of the money contract. I like it. Um, time is your friend. Um, you know, if you uh, find the stock going higher, you will still make money, even if the stock reaches two hundred and ten bucks a share. At around April twenty second, you'll still be in the money. You'll you'll have you'll pay it. You'll pay less than sixteen to get the call back. So you could be wrong by forty dollars and still make money. I like those odds. I like your odds. Uh, way to go. Um, and Nazareth, Uncle Bruce, what do you think about uh, give me back my money option trades? Um, every six months, you just write calls against your cost basis, no matter the stock price. Uh, what do you think about give me? 
give me back my money option trades. Um, you just write calls against your cost basis. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're always writing. My, my attitude on it is as an option writer, you're always writing. And it doesn't matter what you paid for the stock. It doesn't matter in my mind. You're looking at income from the stock is what you're looking for. Income, income, income. It would be nice that the stock holds the value that you paid for it or goes up. That would be great. But if you play the market right, even if the stock slumps, you should be able to make enough revenue from uh, call writing over time to more than compensate you for any capital loss on the stock. So work it, work it, work it. Um, hey, Fa hey, Francis, how you doing? Who cares? Uncle Bruce, you're not getting too old. I'm totally off. Okay. Um, Uncle Bruce, yeah, but the thing is that she's paying ten grand or more to rent the shares. Uh, if there's a nasty big dip, GameStop has shorted more. Any bad news and it falls to 150, 140, 130, she's done. You buy, you win. Well, again, um, if you're buying a, an in-the-money call, 60, and you're writing now a $200 call against the stock, you can bring in a $16 premium, $1,600 coming in, and you you coughed up, what, uh, uh, 11 grand to write the call? Uh, you know, you put up eleven grand to, to get in, and, and you've already received sixteen hundred in. If you clear a thousand on that sixteen hundred trade, let's say, there's a thousand cleared. Uh, you're going to write a second one if you can bring in enough to clear another thousand on it. Heck, in, in four months, you've done that five or six times. You've, you've brought in five, six grand on eleven thousand dollar investment. The stock is unchanged through it all. I like the return on your money. Um, I'm good with that. <clears throat> Go, go, M-E, get and stay above $4, please, says Smoke Dog. Chrome Punisher, I'm back, Uncle Bruce. How you been doing? A little busy. <laughs> it, it's been just a little busy around here. We're, look at that. We're up 14 cents on M-E. Oh, that's lovely to see. Chrome Punisher, it's good to see you, man. It's been a while, and I'm glad you're here. We're up 49 on the Dow at the moment, uh, slipping a little bit here. Um, we'll see how it holds. GameStop at 178.86, up 12.29. Uh, volume on GameStop today has been 4.3 million. I've just noticed a little dip again, 177.57, the low of 176.10. So we're about a dollar 60 away from the low of the day on GameStop uh, today. AMC is off 84, um, Highcroft Mining off, off about nine cents. Duncan is saying, I got meetings guys, but I'll be listening. Um, my granddaughter is very sick, but it's not COVID, thank goodness, um, 99 Nation. This dead cat just fell through the trap door. Uh, yeah, well, we're we're only up 39 on the Dow Jones now. Uh, we're up five on S and P. We're up 16 on Nasdaq. As we are coming back with a little more selling, from what I can tell you, from what I see here. Um, hello, Bagel Gang from NSB. Welcome. Good morning, uh, Chase. Uh, if doing a poor man cover call on GameStop, then there is a five to one split. How would that change my position? So the contract you own, the long one. Deep in the money, you'll now have five of those if it's a five for one split. And instead of being exercisable at uh, what was it you're paying, uh, those were 60s, those would now be uh, 12s. And the stock at uh, 176 will be worth about 35. And uh, you'll be writing 37s, 38s, 39s, and 40s, whatever you're writing. Uh, if you've written one contract against the contract you own, You'll have five contracts that you own, and you'll have written now five against it, but at one-fifth the price. It's all relative, okay? Credit Savage, uh, Uncle Bruce, I get you, but what does she do if it goes to 120, 100 on games? Well, you know, look, stocks fluctuate. We know. We know stocks fluctuate all the time. And if you, if the stock backs off, the, the contract you wrote is worthless. You don't have to buy it back, or you buy it back for a buck or 50 cents. Score that gain. You write another contract that keeps depreciating, you'll score that gain, and you'll bring back some of the dough, a chunk of the dough that you're losing on the contract you went long on. But if you're long at 60, you're so in the money, the stock has to collapse from 170 to 60 bucks to put that contract at the money. I like the odds of this individual being able to write, 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 and keep writing. So that's the deal. Freethinker, you'll have five times as many contracts worth one-fifth of value each is exactly right. Zed, Uncle Bruce, I may have asked this question. I have GameStop 150s expiring January 20 to 23. 
I had to roll it. I had to roll into it with a premium of fifty-four dollars for me to buy it back. Would cost sixty-two. Do I have a problem? Well, if you're buying it back, you're going to lose eight bucks. But um, do you really need to want to buy it back right now? The stock's one seventy-six, one seventy-seven at the moment. Uh, these contracts. Uh, your contract is only seventeen in the money now. Uh, this morning, when we were watching the show together, you know, when we were here to, this morning, you were forty to forty-five dollars in the money. Now you're only in the money. 26 or 27 dollars um the lower the stock goes the the less of a problem you have obviously the higher it goes the the more it is but you are so far out to january 23 you've got time now to assess uh what it is you want to do and when you want to do it um, the the value of the contract you say is 62 dollars um it's a 150 call it's only worth 17 bucks so there's 45 dollars of premium on it that will evaporate as the months go by, obviously, uh, assuming the stock trades at this level. So if the shares are trading at uh, 180 three, four months from now, let's just suppose, this contract will be 30 in the money and it might only be trading at, uh, at about 50 bucks. You're already up $4 on a stock that's been going up on you. On the other hand, if it stocks touches 155 in the next month or so, even for 15 minutes, touches 55, 155, you're only five in the money. You're probably going to have a $30 contract. You can buy it back for 30 bucks and score a $24 gain. Nice move. So you've got some potential there. Okay. Hi, Uncle Bruce. Uh, starting uh, our second week of cruising in Miami to get new people on Mondays and Fridays. Uh, been on since the 25th of March. Beautiful. That's, that's beautiful. <laughs> Uh, you've been having a fun holiday, and we've been having fun over here. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you when you're back, and I'm glad you're keeping in touch with us. <laughs> Enjoy. And as we, uh, 99 Nation videos, hey, oh, 177 on the GameStop right now. The Dow up 54 points. Uh, I get it, says Credit Staff. So if the stock goes down, it's actually a good thing since that's what you want. If it goes up on you, you roll. But my point is, if you roll 30, 40, the, 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 that you've paid 140, well, again, uh, it depends on what kind of movement we're talking about. Are we, are we talking about violent $50 moves every day? That is, an, that's anomaly. That's, that's the rarity of rarity. It would not be unreasonable for GameStop to, you know, fluctuate $15 a day between low and high. And maybe have a five dollar move either way. That that can happen on GameStop. We know that we're all used to it. But the key here is if you are sitting on a sixty dollar call, deep in the money call, uh, with the stock at one seventy something, and you're writing one eighties, one nineties, two hundreds, and you're bringing in nice premiums, if you can bring in five hundred to a thousand a week on a single call option that you're writing from depreciation. Uh, this is really good money on an investment of eleven thousand dollars. This is phenomenal annual returns. It's huge. But here's the thing: um, if the shares over four months go up to two ten, let's say, go up to two hundred ten bucks, your your contract, your sixty, is now worth one hundred fifty book value. Uh, you paid uh, what a um, hundred and sixteen for it. It's now worth $150. You're up $3,400 on your call option. That's just like being a shareholder, of course. You can buy the stock today at $170, it goes to $210. You're up almost, you know, you're up $33. You're up $3,300. So the call option will go up just like the stock will go up. And if you're writing calls out of the money and staying out of the money every week or so, you're just rolling up, rolling up, writing another one and so on. You're still writing calls. You're now just going to write 220s, 225s if the stock's at 210 good for a week or two, um, you're going to keep bringing in $500, $1,000 a week against your original $11,000 investment, which is now worth $15,000. Now, you sell that, uh, you, you bought back your last call, you sell your in-the-money contract at 60 to 60, get out of it, uh, grab 115 uh, grand, turn around and write a deep in the money next summer call for uh you buy a, an 80 you, it's 20 dollars more higher the stocks are 210 you're maybe you're buying a 100 deep in the money call 100 it's going to run you 110 115 dollars isn't that the strategy again yeah you're just you're taking 15 grand and spending 11 of it to buy a new call 
banking the four grand you gained, capital gain, thank you. You're banking the money you've been bringing in every week, thank you. And now you're sitting on a $100 in the money call and you're writing 225s against it. There you go. Now, if you've banked enough money where you sold the call for 15 grand, you spent 11 grand on the new one, you have four left over, but you've made a bunch of dough writing options in the meantime, and you have another 11 grand that you can cobblestone together, you buy a second deep in the money call option, and now you are writing two game stops at a time instead of one. And if you were bringing in 500 to 1,000 a week with one, you'll be bringing in 1,000 to 1,500 a week or, or more with two, right? So you're now doubling your income per week. Here we go. Leverage, leverage, leverage. Now, some of you out there will have a $60 GameStop call. You'll have an $80 GameStop call. Some of you might buy a 100. You might have three calls, a 100, an 80, and a 60. And you're writing calls on all three of them. You're writing three at a time. And it's the same contract. You're writing three 200s or three 190s for next Friday or whatever it is you want to be writing on. Sometimes you get day trades. Sometimes it's a trade during the week. Sometimes uh, it, it, uh, you only break even on the trade. You sold the call for 11. You had to buy it back for 11 because the stock went up. Well, good news. All three contracts that you own all went up with the stock. So sure, the stock went up, but the value of your contracts went up. And so you buy back the 190, whatever you wrote, now write 200s or 210s going forward again. Welcome to the option market. Say goodbye to your boss. Uh, let's see, are some of you guys writing naked calls or is this all covered? Uh, poor man covered calls are covered. Because you have a call option in your hand. You're long with an option to buy 100 shares. And now you're writing a covered call against it. Yes. Poor man covered calls. Uh, let's see here. What else is going on here? Uh, the Credit Savage. Uh, you could have bought the stock at 170 and it's your stock. No time to worry about. Yes, that's true. That's true. And yes, it's an anomaly to have these swings. But we do know GameStop is another beast. Absolutely. Uh I can't argue that, Credit Savage. You're absolutely right. But to buy 100 shares right now at 174, $17,400. To buy a poor man covered call at, with a $60 strike price, it's 11400 11500 To buy an 80 will run you about $9,400. To buy a 100 will cost you $7,400. You're risking the fact that the stock will not go to 100 and prevent you from writing calls against it. Because if your call is out of the money you can't write a call against it but as long as it's in the money you can so if you buy a $7,500 call right now instead of a $17,000 stock uh you can write a call against it if you have $17,000 to buy 100 shares why don't you buy two $8,000 calls instead same amount of money and write two calls now instead of one double your income if your objective is to become self-employed and generate income from your portfolio so you don't have to have a day job. You need to write as many contracts as you can write. So if you own right now 200 shares of GameStop and you sell them, turn around and buy four contracts instead that are 80 something dollar contracts deep in the money to next year, you can now write four calls instead of writing two at a time. The difference might be that writing four calls per every week or two might generate enough revenue to allow you to quit your day job because you might be bringing in 500 a call profit per week and you're writing four of them. That's 2,000 a week in, in revenue, 8,000 a month. Is that enough to let you walk away from the day job with 200 shares of GameStop turned into four poor man covered call options? Something to think about. I don't know. We'll just see. Anyway, uh, Austin's having fun with us. He's trying to have fun with us on April Fool's here. Uh, what can I say? Uh, SoFi 933, that ain't funny. I agree with that. Uh, Rosie, thanks for your input uh, credit. Good points considered for sure. I have shares locked up until Jan 23, and I'm dying to write so I can generate money to buy them back. There you go. Um, what can I say? Uh, 
let's see let's see uh, let's see what's going on um sold a gamestop 200 dollars call expiring next friday for 10 bucks this is crazy next friday 10 bucks uh fantastic um duncan join stock marcus with bruce thumbs up um credit savage uncle bruce i get it but my point is if you have the money to roll over three or four grand and the stock gamestop gets to 170 today then you might as well buy the stock because you spend almost the same on pure mind cover call Again, it, it's all relative, my friend. It's all depending on which call you buy. That's all of it. Chris Savage, uh, I think the idea is that you don't tie that much moolah buying the stock if you don't have to. Wild Willie Winning is here. Quick question, Uncle Bruce. If I have a 190 call, would it be smarter to take premium uh, when in the money then wait on the stock to go back down a little or exercise it at 90? Okay, so I, 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 I'm not sure what I'm reading here. If you're long a 190 call, would it be smarter to take premium when it's in the money? Then wait on stock to go back down a little or exercise at 90. Well, okay. So um, not sure what this question is. If you're long the, the contract and the stock goes up over 190, you're in the money. And if you can make a profit on it, sell it and say, thank you very much. May I have another? Buy another contract if you want. Good luck to you. Um, why would you exercise this contract? I have no idea. Uh, there's no reason to exercise this contract. You can just sell it in the open market and get paid out for it and uh, do, do well that way. I, I don't know if I'm reading this right or I'm missing something here. Rob, okay, I'm back. Whoa, stock is down only 59% on my Friday's 165 cover call. Whoa, come on, baby. Come on down. Maybe I'll actually make money on this thing. Um, uh, I can write calls on any call I own as long as the strike is higher and the expire date isn't past my long. As long as it's in the money. If it's out of the money, I don't think you can write calls. Hi there, Jen. How are you? Nice to see you. 172 on GameStop. We're only up 556 now. Uh, we just touched 171 a few moments ago. The low of the day, 170.59 on GameStop. So we are coming back to break even on the day. Again, those of you out there who are looking at option rollovers, you are patiently watching this market. You are diligently studying the option chain, and you're figuring out whether you can roll over, and if so, can you move up the strike price by writing a call a little longer than the one that's expiring, especially ones that expire today. Uh, a 160 contract right now is worth 1248. A 110 is worth 6248. A 100 is worth 7258. These were a lot more expensive earlier this morning. Right now we're up to we're at 172.58. Hi. 172. Yeah, we were at 195 this mm -hmm. morning on pre-market. Mm -hmm. That's what we're looking at. We got a 130. Dollar one dollar thirty cent drop on AMC to twenty three thirty four, no help there or vice versa, and we're at two seventeen down thirteen cents on Highcroft. What happened there? What is that? I I think rodents have uh, invaded rodents? the house. Yeah. yeah. Albert There's, is rat. There funny. seems to be a chocolate muffin with a whole bunch of the muffin missing. It must be early morning rodents. And and I don't know. You know. I'm busy here with you. I haven't got time to watch all this other stuff. I got stuff going on. We're down 37 points on the Dow. We've gone negative now on the Dow. Uh -huh. We're negative on S&P. We're negative on NASDAQ. We're up a penny on oil. So we got a lot of stuff happening here. This dead cat bounce uh, did come through with 53 minutes into the trade, into the trading day, 53 minutes in. We're negative on all three markets. So there you go. All right. GameStop, 172.81. The Asians were all positive yesterday, this morning. Uh, not by much. Yeah. The Dow was yeah. barely positive. Like the, the the three markets were, yeah, up a fifth of a point, a third of a point. Yeah. Yeah. And we had a five hundred fifty point drop on the Dow last night, and right. most of it was in the last hour and a half. Yeah, like we lost three hundred points in the last ninety minutes. There's no way we're going to go up five hundred points in the first right. hour this morning. Not we're with that on our back. Down. Yeah, yeah, no, no way. We're down forty five, forty six points on the Dow. We're dropping further and faster. Oil now is dropping again at one hundred dollars. 14 cents down 14 cents and GameStop is running into stock it is at 173.21 but it is running into selling it's coming in yeah yeah because we don't know what the split is 
We don't know what date. You don't know the date. We so, don't know yeah. any other details There's of what be we're be taking advantage of this until that stuff comes out. Then, yeah. they'll, then they'll get off the stock. Perhaps, yeah. And there could well be shorters shorting the stock and buying way out of the money call options to give them call options. Right. I, yeah, who knows? I have no other strategies. I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so, there you are. Lovely sunny day. Is no it? snow today. Yay. We had that weird summer snow yesterday where it's so light it just goes up the sides of the buildings. <laughs> cool. And the sun is shining and it's snowing. <sighs> Crazy Alberta. Crazy Alberta. Crazy That's what it is. Alberta. I'm going to wait a while for a bagel. I figured. Because I had that. Yes, I, I figured when I... Yeah. I didn't see anything in the kitchen. And so I thought, oh, well, he's going to be hungry this morning. But as soon as I opened the door. And we, we didn't stop on the way home last night. Like we were I planning. know. I we thought of food. that this morning, too. We were going to get some items, but we didn't do it. But in any event, we're okay. We're, go. we're, good. Okay. we're good. I'm busy doing what I'm doing here, following all this activity. Down 48 on the Dow. and uh, Friday. And Friday, Friday, option expiry date. Lots of activity here. Yeah. Lots happening. Okay. Um, but, yeah going to stay on this um, GameStop story. Did see you see uh, WestJet this morning? Did yeah. you read any WestJet stuff this morning? WestJet is always so good at April Fool's Day. Ah, ah. They always have. Remember the one time the, the tips of their plane wings go up? And so it was that from now on, people are going to have to fold their hands up like that, and it's going to help the airplane fly. They had one where from now on, at the start of every flight, everybody's going to have to stand up and sing the national anthem. That was a couple years ago. <laughs> that was a couple of years ago. Yeah. Today yeah. is book your flights for space now. Ah, space flights on <laughs> WestJet. Yes. And and all inclusives up in the galaxy, and they've got pictures to go with. It's lovely. Lovely. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Way to go, WestJet. It's always fun. Having fun. <laughs> yeah, that one is. And they always get people who believe them. It's, yeah, they it's always go. It's just the it. best. But yeah. we don't have enough to do when we get on a plane. Now, before we taxi off, we're going to have to, everybody has to stand up again. And sing the national <laughs> sing anthem. Sing the national anthem. What is that? In two languages. In two languages in Canada. <laughs> oh, man. That's great. <laughs> yeah, they, they're Their good marketing at guys are. They're thinking. Their crew is going. They're, they're scheming. Mm -hmm. They're always scheming. They're always scheming. Right on. <laughs> okay, well, I'll leave you. Okay, man. So good morning, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. No Miss bagel Jen? today. Not, well, not yet. Know. Later. Not yet. I'm not hungry right now. I'm, I'm, I'm all worked up here about what's going on. And I had that this morning just to get me through. And, and just, uh, and just uh, okay. okay. Go and I'm flimmied up. And it's, uh, I'm busy. I, I know. I am. I am as well. We were out last night with our daughter, and which was nice. Laughing and making a ruckus, and this morning my voice is showing it. There you go. <laughs> there you go. We're working, working, baby. We're there working. There we go. Okay. All right, Jen. Thank you so much. I'll catch you later. Uh, we're uh, we were down seventy points a few minutes ago on the Dow. We're now down fifty-two. Waves. Uh, we're going through this right now. Um. Anyway, there you go. Uh, what else is going on here? Uh, uh, Uncle, uh, the creative center. Uncle Bruce, enough learning, please. My smooth brain is hurting now. Uh, it's brain drain. Uh, the the brain pain. Thank you for your teachings, old man. Uh, we love you. No worries. Um, and uh, let's see. What is a poor man covered call? Uh, lesson number eight. I think that's the one I have. Class number eight. And in class 12 and 13, there's all kinds of information about this. Um, I'm so glad I didn't buy my covered call back this morning for $30. Almost panic bought it back, Rob said. We're down to 174 You're almost even on this deal now, buddy. Uh, what can I say? Uh, Rob, NSB, covered call against a deep in the money call option instead of against 100 shares. Tiff, sorry, uh, my autocomplete decided to put some German words in there. Oh, man. Uh, let's see. CNBC mentioned a GameStop stock split, but blew it off. I think everyone is forgetting that this is a dividend split, not a traditional split. The market does not get the shares. Only actual shareholders do. Dave, the Mac guy, uh, credit coach, you're missing the point of leverage. 
Um, Cloak, if you are short this stock, you will have to buy in at some point as these will not be available to shorts and naked shorts and is not cash payable on the record date. Uh, comes, it, it will have to be bought. Um, NSB is going, Rob, I get it. Uh, Odin's Pumpkin, what about writing SoFi cover call for the next year? Um, April 2023's uh, 1250 strike for a buck 80. What do you think about this, Bruce? Um, you could. Um, I wouldn't want to go that far out, but I mean, you know, you could. Uh, I'd be looking at something a little closer in um, myself. I, I don't want to be out all the way to April 23. Uh, let's see. Um, GameStop is coming down. Says Vapor up 174.51. Um, let's see here. Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, hi, Uncle Brees. Uh, hi, Uncle B. Uh, so I finally was able to roll my GameStop 140 cover call expiring today to a 160 for May with a couple of dollars of additional premium. Phew, that was stressful. Laughing out loud. Got her done. And if the stock wants to go down to 150, you are laughing, man. You are laughing. Doesn't have to be in the money. There it is. Uh, good morning, Jen from Duncan. Uh, Tiff, um, Odin's Pumpkin. I thought about that. However, if SoFi makes a run, you'll have trouble rolling up, and I would look into selling something with lower strength. 99 Nation. Uncle Bruce, can we do an intermission feature on the channel called Bagels with Jan? <laughs> I can see it now. You've just got to spread this uh, uh, schmerkle spread smooth. It's a nice curling run. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, uh, let's go. New member, Olivia. Welcome back, Olivia. I'm glad you're here, as I'm always glad you're here. Uh, it's nice to see you uh, as a chillin' member. Yeah, glad you're with us. And uh, as always, I have returned. I've missed you all for four days. I'm glad you're here. We we, we love you. Um, I think you can write a Francis, Francis. I think you can write cover call on SoFi, but you're, uh, if you're scared the stock takes off, you can you get, get, give back a little of the premium to buy some insurance. Um, let's see. Uh, I will remember that in the future. I didn't think about the rolling up part of it. I need to think more about exit strategies when thinking about covered calls. Uh, what's that UBI index at, Olivia? Does anybody know? Good morning, uh, Auntie, Auntie Jane. Uh, Jen, uh, please feed this man. He's been dealing with my questions this morning. Please feed this man. <laughs> Munimo. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Tiff, a May 20 $10 strike would get you 84 cents right now. For instance, 84 bucks for a 49 day looks juicier. Um, uh, Rob, dude, I almost bought back a, a covered call panic too, but nope, we don't panic anymore. We've been tempted by desperation. Um, let's see. Uh, grabbed a, a sp splitter. Grab five smart rent at 502. Now Matterport will be next at 15 units for the long run, just in case I want to start there with options after SoFi. Crazier, crazy 49er. Damn it, bought my February 14, 215 GameStop calls back for a $4 profit because I panicked. Uh, Bobby, uh, keep dropping GKNG. Lord, mine out from 11 to 3. Uh, nation, oh no, bought back too soon. Uh, what else? Uh, Oh, we're up to speed here. Got my stink bid in for 520 on that 165 for today. Just need to drop to like 168.69, and I am out. Uh, you're close. I am out with a profit. That's true. Yeah, well, 173.69. The Dow off 55, and S&P off 190. NASDAQ gaining right now 17 points, trying to hang on down 12 cents on oil. That's where we're at right now on these markets, 173.69. On GameStop, the low of the day on GameStop is 170.59. We're three dollars away, just a little less than three dollars away or so from the low of the day on GameStop. Volume on GameStop now is 5.6 million shares, and we've been steadily moving down all morning, down, down, and down. Just, just so you know, Rocket Lab down 15 cents, SoFi down six, AMC down a buck ten. Uh, Highcroft Mining down 12 cents to 12, 217. Matterport up 32 cents to 844. ME holding four dollars and one cent up 18 cents today. Spire down four cents. Um, ATIP up two to 190. Smart Rent down four cents. Sextera down four to 12.18. Pfizer down 58 cents to 51.18. Down goes. Pfizer, 51.15 now on Pfizer as it continues to back 
off. Very interesting. I'm watching Apple uh, uh, today, hoping that it goes below the uh, the EMA, uh, so this bull flag on the daily doesn't keep forming. Uh, what's the EMA? Anybody tell me what what does that stand for? I don't even know. I should know, but I, I don't know. Too, got too much else watching. I'm watching too much else going on here. Where are we at on Apple now? One seventy three thirty, one seventy three forty eight, down one thirteen. Um, yeah, we were pushing. What were we pushing? One seventy eight the other day. What was one seventy seven? Was that right? Uh, did we get that high? One seventy nine fifty seven. Now one seventy three. Uh, I was thinking one seventy one sixty five uh, was doable. Um, Microsoft up a penny right now. Goldman down seventy four. Cisco down fifty nine. IBM down 128, uh, Home Depot up 61 cents, Vanek down 271. All right, there you go. We're down 53 on the down right now. GameStop 174.83. Um, Andrew purchased a Matterport two and a half dollar call for 5.95 that expires January the 20th in 23. I did this expecting Matterport to rise since it's being added to the uh, ARRK. What are your thoughts? So. Um, he's talking about how the stock is being added, has been added already to the Kathy Woods um, Innovation Fund and was hoping that Matterport would take a bit of a run here. Well, it's a 250 call and the stock is uh, about 850. So the call has a book value of six bucks. And so our friend Andrew has a call that is worth what he paid for it. Plus, he's got time on his side. Now, the cat, the question is, Will the stock run to say ten bucks? This call will be worth seven fifty plus premium. Maybe it'll trade at eight bucks. If the stock goes to twelve fifty, he's ten dollars in the money plus premium. He might have a thirteen dollar contract um, or ten fifty contract against a six dollar cost. Now you know, not a bad move, buddy. Not a bad move. Uh, we're all hoping, Andrew. Let's. That's our thought. Estimated moving average. That's what that means right on. Nelson, I wrote two SoFi covered calls for April uh, 23 at 223. Uh, my cost average is down to 1269. So if I get exercised, I'm getting almost $15 a share. I'm just going to cross my arms and wait to be exercised and buy back. Well, there, there's a good plan right there. Yeah. Um, get taken out and um, uh, cash in and move on. Absolutely. Nothing wrong with that. Um, astrology, Bruce says, Michael, uh, let's see here, uh, exponential moving average. Swinton, uh, an expand, exponential moving average is a type of a moving average that places a greater weight and significance on the most recent data points. Okay. Okay. Um, GameStop, 175.44. Um, exponentially, it's down from its opening, uh, but it's up from its low of the day. So exponentially, it's at 175. Exponentially. And there you go. That's where we're at. Uh, okay, we're good. It's all fine. Down 57 on the Dow, um, seven five, a 0.75 gain on S&P and a 44-point gain on NASDAQ. So NASDAQ's trying to come on right now. Uh, S&P's still kind of breaking even. The Dow's still down 60 points. We'll see where this tug of war leads us as the day wears on. We have a lot of options in play right now. Oil down 8 cents a barrel at the moment. And we're at 174.71 on GameStop with the low of the day at 170. 59 okay golden Sachs is down uh 66 bucks at the three i don't know what that means uh michael macd for lunch i'm feeling it okay um 99 it makes me so want to wear my best sweatpants and go discount browsing at the bargain bin giddy uh, just a metric people use uh rob just sitting here rolling up the rim on my phone waiting for my stink bit to hit come on down austin Pfizer rollovers are looking great today. There you go. <laughs> That's right. Ah, lovely, lovely stuff. Um, way a ta go. We're down 62 on the Pfizer. 51.17. Uh, that's really looking a lot better than 54 bucks a share the other day. Fantastic, Austin. Way to go, man. Way to go. Scoring on those calls. Uh, we're down 65 on the Dow. A little more, a little more red showing up. We just went red on S and P. Uh, the NASDAQ just lost some gas. We're only up 31 points now on the NASDAQ market. GameStop, 173.84. So we're under 174 now to 173.80. 173.56. Uh, so we're getting to win in $3 
of the low of the day again on GameStop. We're backing off a bit. Only off a nickel on SoFi, down a dime on Rocket Lab. Um, we're up 28 on Matterport, 841. ME at 403, up 20 cents. Spire's coming back a bit. It's only down a penny. It's at 209. Um, ATIP holding a three cent gain right now to 191. Smart Rent down three cents and Six Terra down seven. So penny changes here and there on some of our favorites. Um, you remember two weeks ago when GameStop was 80 bucks? Wow. A couple of things have changed. A couple of things have changed. That was the week after financials and it went down there. Yeah, things have changed. Um, Michael, um, it was 77 and change drop. I stole it at 77.81. You got to wonder, um, you know, when they uh, they had their uh, uh, they had their report come out. Uh, oh, pardon me. You got to wonder. Uh, you're you're Ryan Cohen. You're on the board of directors. The financials get released. Stock drops to 77 bucks, like like Rob is saying, like Michael is saying here. And um, uh, within about a week of the financials being released, uh, Ryan Cohen goes in and buys up 100,000 shares on the open market, starting at 90, 94 a share, stopping at 106, something like that, averaging 102, about 100,000. And then a week and a half later, the company announces a stock split. Now, I'm wondering, when did the board of directors discuss this? Did they discuss the idea of a stock split and a share authorization? They talk about the idea of this back when the financials came out? Or did they talk about this the day before Ryan Cohen bought 100000 Or the day after he bought 100000 Like, when did this come up for discussion? Um, in relation to Mr. Cohen and other directors buying up the stock. They bought stock in the 90s and 100s. And here we are now at 173 a share. I'm just, I'm just asking. I'm just curious. When do you think this happened? Um, did they know that this was coming down, that they would be announcing this in the last little while? I mean, I'm wondering. I don't know. Um, I cannot say. Mm, Rob, I do remember those 90 GameStop days. We bought 100 more shares, a beautiful thing. Uh, he is such a boss, RC. Um, it was 17th of March, the last bargain. There you go. Rob, uh, could RC be investigated for insider trading, being that he bought stocks so close to a big announcement? That's what I'm wondering. Is it? Is that, um, you know, is that open to investigation? Um, if the board meeting was held... A week after he did this, you know, just just a, a couple of days ago, a board meeting came up, and this topic was brought up and voted on on the on at that meeting, and all adopted. Then there was nothing in the in the playbook. But had this been discussed at a, a director meeting a month ago, and was tabled for further discussion down the road, and now it's being discussed and approved. In the meantime, guess who did what? I don't know. I'm just curious. Don't you think something this big they had in the talks for a while beforehand, though? So that's what I'm thinking, Olivia. You, you don't make these. These aren't flippant. Oh, let's do this decisions. These take time. You got to go over all the positives and the negatives. Exactly. By the way, we're down 73.8 on the Dow now. We're down half a point on S&P. We're still up 41 on NASDAQ. Um, Rob, I don't think he's dumb enough to have not had a backup plan. I hope he doesn't bite him in the you-know-what. Nelson, is GameStop so, of course, it will be investigated, um, saw a report that says Planet Labs is locked into nonstop CAGR for an explosive 2023. Please be advised, Bagel Folk, it's on serious discount. I, I have no idea what this is. I have no idea what that is. Uh, Nicholas, so fine is green. There you go, so fine. Yeah, up three cents, 948. Yay! Go, so fine. We're down 11 on Rocket Lab. We're down 76 on the down. We're at 174, 173.99 on GameStop. Uh, AMC down 114. Um, Highcroft Mining down 15 cents to 214. Matterport up 34 to 846. ME 404.5 up 21.5. Spire down 2 cents to 208. ATIP up 2.5 to 
to 190 and a half. Smart rent up three cents. 509, six zero down a dime to 1212. Pfizer down 61 to 5160. There you go. There's our a little round down for us as to what's going on. Um, by report, do you mean a Motley Fool article? Michael's asking. Rob, Nicholas, Jay Morey, tell me when it's blue. Dave the Mac guy, it's likely they had this game plan in play for a long time based on if the stock price ever reached a certain threshold. Maybe, maybe they've maybe that's a plan. Yeah, maybe they thought if the stock ever breaks 190, we'll talk about a split again. Broke 190, they're talking about a split again. Maybe that's what it what how it happened. I, I don't know. Can't actually say. Uh, we're up two pennies on SoFi to 947. And we're at 174.02 on GameStop. And I also see it at 173.33 now. Here we go. We're down 173.31 now on GameStop. Uh, seems to be backing up a little bit right now. 173.31. The low of the day is 170.59 at this point. But we're dipping a little right now. Okay. Okay. 17310 17310 um we're active here for sure we're active um oil down 72 cents now to 9956 we've broken the $100 barrier again on oil okay there you go uh yes um interesting 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 uh 17363 right here okay Whew. one you know one, half of my brain this morning was wondering boy do you think that the gamestop would go to 220 today 225 this news could really make it go but it hasn't happened even this dividend talk it hasn't uh, hasn't done it but again i i mentioned to all of you keep an eye on the stock as it backs off you look for your spots where can you make your move to roll over where can you do it you always keep your eyes open for those but at the moment it is under pressure uh okay cheers everybody from uh from around the world down 30 on the dow a little recovery right now oh boy hmm Oh, what's the result of your morning poll, Bruce? When I logged in, it was like 70% were saying the stock would be over 200. Let's take a look at this poll. Um, the question was, GameStop shares will be over or under $200 by the end of trading today. 68% figured the stock will close at over $200 tonight. 32% uh, say it'll be under $200 tonight. tonight. 740 people have responded to the poll question. That's a nice number. We've had 344 people give us a thumbs up this morning, and I do appreciate that. If you can hit the thumbs up button for me, we might have a shot at getting to 400 here very quickly. 56 away from 400 thumbs ups, and a whole bunch of you folks here. I do appreciate this. Help me out. Nail, nail this thumbs up button for us, and let's see if we can get this thing over 400 as quick as possible. 348 are now here. Only 52 to go. 351 now. 49 left to go. Thank you very much for helping out with the poll question today. 355 are in. 68% um, out of 744 people think the stock of GameStop is going to close over 200 today. That's quite a quite a number. 358 thumbs ups. 42 to go to get to uh, 400 thumbs ups. There's 359 now. 361, 39 to go. Guys, you're great. Thank you very much for helping me out with these thumbs ups. The momentum is uh, helping the channel dramatically. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, Uncle, the market is reversed. Good news, we get a dip. Bad news, the market rises. Frumbler, um, I'd be happy if I had bought a GameStop calls instead of writing them I'm down so much on my covered call. Tiff, I wouldn't be surprised if GameStop would be red by the end of the day. Dave, the Mac guy, who's buying? To hold for the split at these prices doesn't make sense. You want the stock to dome down pre-split before buying or just wait until the post-split. There's that. Lots of speculation on how it's going to go. 174.19 on uh, GameStop. Now 173.80 on GameStop. All right. 
Um, Munamo, the stock split will put people back in the game that got in in the three hundred dollar range. Spare Uncle Bruce, any advice for Matterport? I I want to fill that order and forget it, but I don't want to be too expensive in the uh, mid run. Well, at Matterport eight forty four is the price of the stock. This is still ridiculously cheap. It is just crushingly cheap uh, cheap price. Four oh seven on ME, four oh eight now on ME up a quarter. Spire. 207.6 down 2.4 cents. HIP at 190 and a half up two and a half cents. Smart rent 511 up a nickel. Six Dara 1211 down 11. Pfizer 5126 down 51 cents. Two day on on uh, Pfizer down 32 on the Dow right now. And yep, 173.65 on on GameStop. Um, how often do you peruse through new opportunities? Um, I, I try to watch all the time, but I got to tell you, with all the GameStop activity lately, it's taking a lot of energy to stay on top of it and the other stocks that I watch. Um, I don't have a research crew. I don't have 20 people reporting to me. I'm a one-man crew, and I cannot watch 60 stocks at the same time or 150. I can keep an eye on the markets and certain stocks, and then we get into them, and uh, especially those who are option writers. I really like to zero in on the contracts that most of us are, you know, most of the folks here are writing options on so that I can zero in on these situations because we get to know resistance support levels on these stocks, which then show us, uh, you know, the, the, the path forward to making money. Uh, did you, uh, did you uh, bullies think you were going to have all the fun today? Uh, come on, man. It's a stock market. Bears have to have fun too. Care Bear unit. Just don't be a pig or you'll get slaughtered. Coyote, Rumbler, buying calls ends in massive failure often for most people. Look around the chats and you see everyone complaining about their bot calls expiring worthless every day. Rob, I am am I being too careful that we'll see a new low today on GameStop? Or do you think 170 was a low of the day? Um, th th this stock has a $15 down dip anytime and a $15 up dip anytime. That's what you've got to buy into with this thing. It could be 159 in five minutes. You don't know. Um, we're at uh, 174.47 right now. That's where we're at. Okay. John, glad I didn't sell all my Spire this morning for a small profit for a half dozen games. Up. Maybe GameStop has fallen enough. Where does this make sense? No idea. Um, uh -huh, says 1999 uh, nations. Um, 952 up 7 on SoFi. We're down 11 on Rocket Lab. The Dow is positive 3.98 points. S&P up Six Nasdaq up sixty-two. Dow's now up nine points. Uh, GameStop one seventy-four sixty-five. AMC twenty-three eighty-three down eighty-one. Uh, we're down nineteen cents on Highcroft near the low of the day. I think two ten. Uh, two oh seven is the low, so we're right there near the low of the day. We're at eight fifty up thirty-eight on Matterport. Uh, that's a good sign. Up a quarter on on twenty-three meter four oh eight. Spire down 2.4 cents. ATIP up 2.5 to 190 and a half. Smart rent up a penny to 507. Six Arrow down 14 cents, 1208. Pfizer 5128 down 49 cents. Home Depot up 258. Vanic Vectors down 292. IBM down 143. Microsoft is uh, up 88. Apple's down 79. Goldman up 41 cents. Cisco's down 39. So it's a mixed bag here. 19-point gain on the Dow, though, a little a little recovery, but 173.99 on GameStop. Uh, there's uh, there's some, uh, you know, resistance, I guess. Yeah. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mirko, John, uh, why would you do that? As far as only gone to four, double. Hi, Uncle Bruce, Mr. T. Um, I'm thumbs up number 361. Thank you, my friend. With the forthcoming GameStop split, how will the option premiums be affected if it splits five for one? Well, it, it, you'll you'll for every for every contract you're long or short, you'll now be long or short five instead of one. Uh, but if the contract was a uh, oh gosh, if the contract was a uh, one hundred fifty dollar call, um, it'll now be a thirty dollar call. Just divide it by five. That's all there is to it. And we'll see how the shares react in the meantime. 174 on GameStop. Mm. 
Oh man, oh man, oh man. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Lots of comments here on this these questions. Thank you, everybody, for answering each other's questions and being here. So Cisco calls on Wednesday for 31 cents. I just bought them back. Eight cents, right on. Uh, Spire is the only stock I am in that is green. Spire just stays flat, no volume. Uh, Gaiotti, all those big uh, loss uh, uh, posts on Wall Street bets from degenerate option buying. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, there we go. There we go. DQ, well done on your contracts on the Cisco's. Well done. Um, good job. Good job. Good job. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Man, oh man, lots going on here. Uh, the Dow up 17 points, now up 20. Uh, we're up on the other two indexes. Six point gain on SP, 57 point gain on NASDAQ. The Dow's the markets are trying to get a rally to go to get together. We're down 69 cents on oil to 99.79. We're at 172 again on GameStop. The low of the day, 170. 59. Uh, that is the low. We're at 172.63, about $2 away from the low of the day again as GameStop is slumping back little by little. It, it, it is um, running into cell waves. It's coming through with some cell waves. That seems to be what's going on. Whew. Um, Nothing burger with GameStop. Uh, sorry, Uncle Bruce. I guess I did not ask correctly. Will the premiums be as high as they are now post-split? Oh, um, probably not because the uh, they will be percentage-wise, yes. Dollar-wise, no. How about that answer, my thinking? Um, okay. Uh, you looking for the best option traders? Join stock markets with Bruce. Uh, yeah, those are the best option traders. God, is, I think uh, the lost something post, knowing that there's a bigger idiot than me out there, makes me feel better. <laughs> DQ saying to Mike, I do have a ton of Cisco. I got a ton of this stuff. Tiff, it also shows the potential of writing calls. From Blur, now, uh, now it, it, instead of averaging down, I'm having to save money to do a rollover potentially in the future. Uh, GameStop, 172.47. We are $2 away from the low of the day. Actually, a little less than that now. Um, SoFi, 950, up 6. Rocket Lab, down a dime. AMC, down 89. Um, uh, High, Highcroft, down 20 cents, down 17 cents. Uh, 172.42 on, uh, on the GameStop shares. Uh, $2 away from the low of the session here. Okay, that's where we're at right now. Lots to follow. Um, John Mirko was a thought that I could take advantage of GameStop ripped up a bit and then could sell more shares of Spire. Mr. T, makes sense, Uncle Bruce. Thank you. Uh, where, uh, the spread between closing and buying GameStop on each is now very low. Probably it'll drop more for sure. Otherwise, the spread is higher. My dry powder is low, is low but uh, too, but the musket stays warm, says 99 Nations. So, Gaiotti, I mean, if you want to uh, if you want to go buy calls and think that'll work long-term based off of one successful instance, I won't stop you, but warning you, many people here have that same thought before. DQ, I'm kind of glad uh, my after-hour statement on GameStop shares didn't hit last night. Uh, we're at 172.49 right now, hanging on to a slight gain. Now we just dropped the 171.52. We're a dollar away from the low of the day on GameStop. We're a dollar away now, 6.2 million traded on GameStop shares. The Dow Jones is up 9.6 points, S&P up seven, NASDAQ up 66. Uh, Rocket Lab down 11 cents, SoFi up six, and the GameStop 171.19. We are 50 cents away from the low of the day on GameStop. Stock is coming in, 171.08. Selling is coming in right now on GameStop. AMC down 97. Uh, Highcroft is down 17. Matterport down 29. M uh, sorry, up 29. Emmy up 25. Spire down three. ATIP up three. Smart Rent up two. GameStop 171 19. 170 51. That's a new low. 17051. That's a new low of the day. 
right now we're at the low right now we're threatening the 170 level on GameStop still holding a 420 gain ish here roughly a 420 gain with a 170.51 low trade now 170.33 we're going lower we're up only 375 on the day on GameStop 170.43 on the stock somebody bought GameStop at 200 last night yikes 170.33 170.74 170.33 low of the day now 170 27 right here um i just changed my 500 gamestop shares into 10 october 80 calls sold 10 covered calls april 8th 200 cashed in 760 us thank you very much uncle b 10 calls for 7600 bucks just came in the front door at 200 each thank you very much 169 73 new low of the day 169.73 and we just touched 169.33 we're up 315 if that right now i've never wanted a stock to go down like i want this one to go down says nelson i have a bunch we dip lower then reverse later this afternoon rob was watching it at 170 169.50 uh with a 169.33 low trade let's see what the low low trade is 169.33 we're 169.39 it's coming in stock is coming in we're dropping we're dropping uh go to yep i was trying to get some at 181.01 hoping i could flip before the market open or write a crazy call at the option at the open those of you written calls this morning you're looking good those of you who are looking at rollovers you're looking better as we back off bit by bit by bit now the low today 169.33 the high 189.77 the 20 dollar spread has been done again today there's how this is going, guys. That's what's happening. Uh, moving my stink bid. Now I'm in a positive. Move that stink bid down, buddy. Get back it off. Uh, seven. Uncles would be smart to roll over a GameStop 90 deep in the money. 422 expiring right now. Should I do that now? Uh, no, I wouldn't panic uh, at all. Um, would not be in a hurry. Uh, just let this stock settle in. Uh, this, this split news is going to calm the hell down. It's really going to calm down, and um, it will be um, not a factor next week. People will not be talking about it much. But we'll be trading all over the place, but you don't have to make a move right now. If, if, a, if a trade is apparent that you can move into a call at a really nice bump up in premium for no money, uh, then look at it. But otherwise, you don't have to do anything. You've got time. you got time. 168. 62 uh, i think the low trade here 168.42 uh is in play now 168.52 last trade uh 6.4 million something 6.43 million traded um under 169 right now uh this is the cross your arms method thanks uncle uh 169.69 bids are activated i enjoyed as well as watching gamestop dropping want to buy back with the money i have since 190 uh games of 159 at the end of the day do you think that's gonna happen uh welcome to the dark side uh you know those april 8s are already down two bucks a piece here you know, just you know, just for you for you too that's beautiful stuff um let's see um uh, rob ha, i missed the stink bid change i'm out with a small profit on the 165s wow uh, so he got bought he got bought in couldn't change his order fast enough i did not think that was going to happen today crazy john sitting on my hands don't have the power to buy 100 down of the powder so i'll just sit and watch you guys a uh, 169.50 on the stock uh we bottomed out at 168.36 i see it i see it now 170. uh the moves on gamestop in the week was exactly why uncle bruce doesn't trade wow so crazy stressful i haven't got time to trade and talk to you at the same time plus i'd be distracted i would be so distracted it would be pointless i i, I would be no good to you at all most most interesting volumes and markets right now the dow is up one point right at the moment uh, 170.50 on gamestop Whew. tons of stuff going on here just so much interesting to see it break 170 today really interesting we closed last night at um, <clears throat> 166.58. Uh, we got within $1.80 of that price uh, so far. 
the day ain't over. Uh, look at that. We are still under pressure. 170.34. We could be negative on the day today. We could be negative. I've said it already. See what happens. Um, okay, I'm out now. Go back up to 200 a share. Let's go, says Rob. <laughs> all right, all right. I, yeah, got me out of there. All right. Um, I'm good just writing cover calls on our SPACs. Easier on the blood pressure, says Nelson. <laughs> 170 even $170 again on GameStop. We've come back again. Are we taking another run at it and going lower? We're going to find out real soon just what's going on. Um, keep an eye. Keep an eye. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. The Dow down six points. Uh, flatlining right now. Not going very far at this point in time. Man. Man, oh man, oh man. Thank you all for your support today. We have now got 376 thumbs ups coming in today. Thank you, everybody. I hope you made some money today. And I hope your blood pressure is all calming down a little bit here. Uh, it's nice to have you here with us today. We're at 2351 on AMC down 113. 376 thumbs ups with 24 to go to get to 400. Thank you for helping me get to 400 thumbs ups today. I do appreciate this as we uh, try to tell YouTube. Send us more viewers, especially those interested in GameStop. What's happening here? We have uh, info we keep sharing all the time and uh, try to make ourselves smarter to make ourselves more money. 380 on the thumbs up meter, 20 to go to make 400. Thank you all. Uh, 34, 24 minutes to go on this show, and we're only 20 away from 400 thumbs ups. Thank you guys. 171, 31 on GameStop as we jump, jump, and jump. 19 thumbs ups left to get right on. Um, let's see, Rob, what a crazy 24 hours. Level up. No more writing for me this week. Let's see where this thing goes from here. Spare, spare, go Matterport. Uh, five cents and I'm filled for sure. Uh, we're at uh, on Matterport right now, 843 up 31 cents. The Dow's up 17 points. GameStop, 171.29. Um, gonna take a walk. Uh, good, good luck, folks. Right on, Robert. John, uh, GameStop candle, 15-minute candle is green. Alberto, smart thing to do. I'm out as well. Frumbler, the club, says he sold all his SoFi. John, looks like it wants to try the upside. There you go. All kinds of, all kinds of stuff going on here. Uh, so much activity. Uh, the Dow up now, 25.9, trying a little rally here. Um, we're up a little on the S&P and NASDAQ right now. Okay. Whew. I'd be a wreck trading GameStop. You all must have the steady, the sturdy constitution of a well-toasted bagel. Splare, and it went to 8.5. Matterport hates me, uh, says Splare. <laughs> 8.39 on Matterport. Um, <laughs> oh, man. 171.18 on, on GameStop right now. <laughs> Too much fun, everyone. Thank you all for... Uh, your support today. I really appreciate it. Great to have you here. Uh, fantastic stuff. Um, got a whole bunch of folks been watching today. We do appreciate this. Great to have you all with us today as we try to make sense of what's going on. Those of you who become members, those of you who become subscribers, thank you for your support of this channel. Thank you. Love it. All righty, 384 thumbs up, 16 to go, and we're there, baby, 16 to go, and we're on our way uh, to, to 400 thumbs ups today. Thank you guys very much. 171.84 on uh, GameStop. We're just jumping around here, just a little under 172 again. <sighs> okay. Uh, Coyote is saying to 99 Nation videos, and it, it, was, it, it is nerve-wracking at first. I don't even feel anything anymore. Uh, writing is the way. I, I write. I don't feel any anxiety anymore being a writer. And that's the secret to learning how this is done. 171.41, backing off again on GameStop. When you're a writer, you're the casino. You're you're the building. And uh, the players are the ones who are nervous, not you. Uh, anyway, uh, it's like violence in a bug buzzy, bug, Bugs Bunny cartoon. After a while, you, you feel nothing, says Bobby. <laughs> Pronoun trouble. Duck season. Rabbit season. Duck season. Rabbit season. Duck season. 
rabbit season, duck season, duck season, fire. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try that again. Uh, yep, 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 yep. Uh, laughing out loud. Uh, the problem appeared only because Degrio says I can't buy at market price without having more cash available. Some brokers are very complicated. Otherwise, I would have it already. Alberto, I still feel anxiety, but I always turn on one of Uncle Bruce's videos to calm me down. There you go, my friend. It's all good. 171.01, 170.98 on uh, GameStop. A little sell wave coming through here. The Dow up 35 points right now. Uh, 170.98 on GameStop. Okay. Uh, Gordy, it is uh, it is uh, scary. It's scary the first time a stock runs on you, but it's important to experience that so you know how to handle it, what your options are, etc. Been through it a few times. It's not scary anymore, Gordy. Now I wait and I fold my bare arms. H. Gregory, loving this, Gordy. Oh, and yes, Uncle Bruce walking the path with us with advice is very very helpful. Uh, Splare, uh, never mind. I think I take a break and a walk. Have a good day to all of you and a great weekend as well. Splare, you take care, buddy. Gary, as it as is everyone's advice here, absolutely, uh, 100%, says Alberto. Uh, we are at 171.37 on, on GameStop. Three, $3 away from the low of the day, uh, which can be reached in a minute. These stocks fluctuate so quickly, we can do this in a minute. Uh, AMC twenty three sixty down a dollar four uh, one seventy one twenty five one seventy ninety nine on GameStop so we're we're beginning to break the one seventy one barrier again on GameStop uh, looks like that's what's happening here the Dow up thirty six points right now okay later man says Gaudi ninety nine nation luckily I went through my mental options training with lower stock. I went with training wheels, but I'm ready to ride the big boy bikes now. Right on. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, 170.77. Uh, we're uh, beginning to to uh, to slip a little more. <sighs> mm. About two dollars and forty cents away from the low of the day right now. On uh, GameStop, volume on GameStop now is uh, six point seven seven million. Volume on AMC, twenty six million. Or are we backing up? Um, Highcroft down to thirty four million shares. We are really slowing down on volume today. Matterport eight forty two up thirty cents on a volume of uh, two point seven seven million. Uh, we've got uh, we got Spire at two oh seven a share down three. 23 me 413 and a half up 30 cents today on 23 me 750,000 volume nice to see me going up like this uh sex tariff down a dime smart rent up 11. uh pfizer 5132 down 46 cents right at this moment 27.9 point gain on the dow right now rocket lab down a dime so far up seven gamestop 170.99 uh up 441 okay Lots and lots of uh, tug of war going on with these stocks right now. Tons of this stuff going on. <clears throat> uh, very interesting. Uh, Bobby Atkinson, ME up 30, 30 cents, just to steal thunder from GameStop. H. Gregory, yes, I've panicked several times and bought back early only for the stock to drop. Now, as I, I well fold my arms. I'm folding my arms patiently because patience is a virtue. We are the golden bagel, says Duncan. Michael, ATIP, doing okay. John, glad you guys were able to get out of your calls without getting banged up on the news and pre-market activity. Gaudi, even if the stock stays above your strike, wait, let me get do this thing. Let it get closer to expiration, then roll, and you can always roll into a same higher strike. More time, more profit. Have a great day, Simpleton, says Duncan. Uh, Gaudi, you let the time decay, so you buy it back near the book value, and you write further out to take in the time premium you get the time premium they do not on the buybacks that is how you win 99 nation waiting was the biggest skill uncle bruce helped me with eight months ago when i started to lurk on this channel 
Quixote, patience is truly the number one virtue of all of this. It's the key, guys. You got to be able to hang in there and just relax. Just relax and not panic at all, not worry about it. 170, 169, up 511 on GameStop, trying to hang on to the 170 level, but the stock keeps coming in. Uh, buying is not coming in in a, in a panicky way, it would appear. Uh, selling keeps dribbling in and it keeps knocking it back. SoFi 951 up five six cents right now. Um, Matterport 838 up 28, uh, 23 and me up 29 and a half to 412. It's got a three cent loss on Spire. ATIP up four and a half to 192 and a half. Smart rate up nine to 514. Sixtera down a dime. Pfizer down 44 cents to 5133. Right there. All right, guys. We're down to. What 15 minutes to go on this morning's show. I'll be on this afternoon at 3 o'clock Eastern, as I always am, and I invite you to join me for the final hour of trading for the week for all the option activity this afternoon. We'll finish it off, see how it all works out. Uh, let's see how the game stuff does in the meantime. Thank you guys so much uh, for being here. Um, let's see. Mm, I miss Fenville. Uh, Fenville. It would been have been a. Uh, I would have been a short selling big win this morning. Uh, Trucker Tech, back your current written contract, and sell the new strike date. Uh, as long as you're going to a higher premium, this will not charge your, charge your cash, and it will complete the transaction, with a credit from the new right. There you go. Um, anyway, there you go. Lots to talk about here. Uh, lots going on. All right, uh, 170.32 on game. So it looks like we're going to shoot at 170 again. We'll take a shot at it. Can it break below 170, the low of the day, 168.36? Uh, we're getting within close to about two bucks away from the low of the day here. Is this going to happen? Um, Splare, ATI taught me to be relaxed. Now I'm 20% uh, in the money on it. That's why I love to buy and forget when I feel the time is right. Uh, you missed the first line, Uncle Bruce. Um, uh, okay, oh, here we go. Trucker Tech, here we go. Let me try this again, Trucker Tech. On TD Ameritrade, if you need to roll to a higher premium but do not have the cash to buy back your call to roll out, there's an option to create a rolling order uh, which will buy back your current written contract and sell the new strike with the date as long as you're going to a higher premium this will not charge your cash and will not complete the transaction and with a credit from the new right very interesting very interesting um looks like lunchtime on the market says bobby dq well done jj splare yeah sometimes the line disappeared when it's important um We've got GameStop at 171.34. Not able to hit 170 this time, but we might do it again. Um, AMC down 98. Highcroft down 14. The Dow up 26 points at the moment. Uh, 175.65. Um, but Michael says, yeah, that's how they rip you off with marker orders. DQ uh, Fidelity does the same. Michael. That already has that roll feature too, but it's all market orders and it's not very good. This is why I mentioned that. I, I, I have mentioned in the past, if you're able to buy back your call and you have determined what next call you're going to write um, and you can afford to do the buyback, you have enough power to buy back at least one of the calls you're trying to buy back, you can then write the one you want to write buy back another one, write the one you want to write, and just do a rollover like that. Um, but you do want to do it at your price because it can cost you one or two dollars spreads. You might lose a dollar on the buy side because you're paying too much, and you might lose a dollar on the sell side because you're not getting very much, and that's two hundred dollars on each contract being rolled over. Now, if you're rolling over ten contracts, you're losing two thousand dollars on a rollover, and that's unacceptable. Absolutely unacceptable. So you got to be keep about careful about that. Uh, I hope that helps someone though. The buyback is market. The new right is a limit. Uh, there you go, Michael. Uh, Michael Hunt. Yes, that feature with Fidelity is a joke. He doesn't like it. 
Michael doesn't like it. Anyway, there you go. For some, it works. For some, it doesn't. If you can do rollovers at a very tight spread where the bid and ask on the call you want to buy back and the bid and ask on the call you want to sell are a couple of pennies apart, it's not so bad. But if you are dealing with 50 cent spreads, 80 cent spreads, $1 per spreads per quote, you're going to lose hundreds of dollars per contract. And I would, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, Credit sa says, same here, like, like trucker, RH lets, uh, Robin Hood lets me roll over like that by the caveat is that I have to go market value. So I have no bid or ask power. DQ, this is where I use margin. I back my, I buy back my call using margin. Then I write the next call I want and close out the margin credit. I do it all relatively close in time. So I haven't paid any interest. Uh, the fidelity roll fee, the fidelity roll feature, Gaiotti says, would o would only use if very close expiration, possible exercise, and uh, do not have the settled funds to buy back and write manually. Otherwise, do it all manually. TIF, my broker also has a roll option, but I can add a limit to the roll. For instance, I could say roll for minus twenty cents, and it'll only be executable if the transaction makes me twenty dollars or more. Michael, dude, get out of R H already. Roll, get out of Robinhood already. Um, 173.26 on GameStop. Also, TD Ameritrade says Strucker uh, said that a long call is not proper collateral, but more of a hack to write the contract. Upon assignment, they would short you 100 shares that you must buy at market price. Uh, Mercia Verondi. Uh, Mercia, how are you today? Welcome to the uh, club. You are a member now of the Gold Bagel family. You are one of these folks right over here. And I welcome you to the club, uh, Gold Member Club. Nice to have you up here. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Spire, e yeehaw, happy. I can mention that my Matterport can be now forgotten until I'm deep in the options. <laughs> 840 last trade. Uh, hey, Mercia uh, from 99 Nation Videos. Welcome to the group. 172.76 on GameStop. Uh, we are into the final eight and a half minutes of today's show. Thank you, all of you who have become members today renewed your memberships uh have become chilling with uncle bruce members have become gold members today all of you out there who are subscribing to our channel today thank you thank you all for joining us make sure to join me today at three o'clock eastern time i'll be here for the final hour i'm going to get a little bit of a rest right now i'm dying here i've been up a lot of hours this morning already going to get a little nap and uh charge up my battery and get ready for the final hour of this week's trading and this month's uh We'll start the new month for April. We've got options expiring tonight. So we'll see how things go. Um, keep an eye on these markets, of course. Uh, anything ridiculous happens, I'll let you know, but we'll stay on top of this. The Dow is up 37 right now. S&P is up 6. Nasdaq's up 41. Uh, let's see what happens as we uh, as we move on. Uh, hello, Mercia. Uh, one of us, one of us is Tiff. Uh, Bobby, uh, 18, our Uncle Bruce. Rest up, Uncle B. Uh, Michael, uh, Trucker Tech. Yeah, that's why you buy a deep into money contract that will not be assigned. John, welcome, Mercia. Nelson, later, bagel fam. Uh, Nation, fine. I will eat a bagel without you. <laughs> gotcha. I got to get a nibble in, but I'm going to have to do it off camera. Uh, thank you all. We're up 41 now. We're up 29 on the Dow. We're jumping around a lot. We're still up 29 on the Dow. Uh, GameStop, 172.36. Uh, up 579, but we were as high today as 189.77. Couldn't break into the 190 level today on the on the New York Exchange. Interestingly, we were over 190 all night last night. Uh, 194, 195 this morning for a while too, but then we broke under 190 on the pre market. Now we're down to 172.56. Now I see 172.03. Uh, now tackling the 172 level, and we'll see how much selling comes in here. Uh, Michael, see you at 3 o'clock. You got it, buddy. 3 Eastern, I'll be back on. 172.03 to 12 is our beat ask, uh, is, our, is our range of trading right now on GameStop, everybody. Very interesting, interesting morning. All right. 24-point uh, down dip on the Dow. We're down. We're up. Uh, sorry. We're up 24. Now we're up 35 on the Dow. We're up 5 on S&P. We're up 33 on NASDAQ. So we have gains over there. 17 cent gain on oil at $100, 45 cents. Watching that. And 172.68 to 172.72 on GameStop. Okay. 
Uh, there you have it. My long is deep in the money. My short was at risk of assignment. Didn't have the cash for the buyback. Then discovered the roll feature. It saved my bacon. Right on. Michael, Trucker Tech, I see what you mean. I see what you're doing. Right on, buddy. Got it. Nicely explained. Uh, 172.70 now. GameStop at the moment. Um, join me at 3 o'clock today. I'm going to sign off early here and get some shut-eye in. Thank you all so much for uh, for joining this channel, joining me today. Great to have you here. Um, have a great rest of your morning, early afternoon, and we'll see you at 3 o'clock this afternoon to shut this week down and see where we end up. Okay, guys? Thank you, and we'll talk to you soon.